Hello, and welcome everyone to the Console Gaming League 2v2. Guys, I'm excited to be back. I'm here with Callus, aka Lazaro, uh, aka the man that, that does the voiceovers in Paradise Halo. I mean, the man's a legend. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself, Laz? What's up, everyone? Hey, <laughs> I'm excited to be here, and I'm honestly, man, you should be the one. I'm so happy to be doing this with you because casting casting is tough but you have a lot of experience so i'm happy to be here we got the cgl 2v2 going today and i think we have the lobbies ready yeah we have our first lobby of the first round coming up for you guys it's going to be uh let's see if we can get these gamer tags severity hcs and uh, i want to say deceased or escaped escaped versus sucka and Pharaoh to clutch the first three games, uh, Empire and Plaza, and then Regret if it is needed. Uh, so this is going to be generally just like your regular HCS settings that you'll play in uh, in 4v4 or when the HCS 2v2 playlist is up. Uh, so you'll be uh, seeing some familiar gameplay on these maps. Uh, these players are uh, insanely talented. I'm excited to see what they do in this first round. Uh, that being said, I mean, I, I'm ready to get this started. I want to see, are, are these teams where they need to be for us to, to just get right into this action, Lance? Doesn't seem like it right now. Looks like no. we need Sucka to head over to red team and... Just have a just have a few little, uh, little ends message them to tie up. Yeah, we'll try to get a message out to them and get that started. But Empire going to be our first map. Empire, such a it's an interesting map with a with a dynamic and twos, just because you do have that overshield and camouflage that is going to spawn up in the tower and outside, respectively. We'll see how these teams decide to capitalize, whether they decide to do a one one push to each one, or if they're just going to send two players to the overshield or two players to the camouflage. Now, Laz, if you're going to be in this twos lobby, right, and you were and you let's say we're playing together and we're playing empire what what is your opening start you're going to be sending two players over to the camouflage or you're going to be sending two players over to the overshield you split in the players trying to get trying to eat your cake and get them uh, eat your cake or uh what, what would your strategy be off the start i don't really play a lot of twos to be honest um, i know i'm a big fan of the camo and fours uh you know but it kind of really depends on what the team wants to do you know if you're feeling like hey let's go for you know for the os i might go top middle and then help you play for that and just double team whoever whichever lane we want to do and right, then worry think, about the other os or I the other camera the, i think that would be the way to go with it right you you put one player over in that top mid so they can help uh, the player in camo and then if that player in camo needs the help they can just expand themselves into tower three and just really collapse on the players coming from that opposite uh that opposite side of tower or they realize hey they went over shield you have that player that's in that mid who's in a really dynamic spot to where they can get themselves in position to potentially challenge out the over shield or just get some shots on them uh keep their life stay alive let your team get the camo and stay alive i would definitely put that priority towards camouflage just because you can make just more plays happen with that camouflage that being said i mean when you have the over shield and you're playing fast you're playing aggressive it seems as if you can get away with uh with a lot more than you normally uh, would be able to right yeah i was talking with batch about that the other day because uh he, he brought that point up that it's like the camo you can make a lot of really big you know high iq plays and whatnot but you have to you have to execute where the os you can just like soak attention and just fly at people and get the slayers really quickly and so you Absolutely. know we'll see like how these players like play that right that overshield you can just use it to to really just fly across the map and and take those couple shots that you normally wouldn't be able to take get yourself in a better position and then use that extra health to find a quick kill especially in the twos playlist right where you don't have to worry about two three players team shotting you at the same time really if you can isolate out a player and have that overshield it can be so deadly but that being said the camouflage still affords you that free movement that free reign throughout the map and then you can find yourself in those better positions get ready for the team shot coordinate with your team i think teammates that have really great communication and a sense of positioning that camouflage will will serve itself very well for the team right i agree so i'm just peeking over here to the screen making sure we are going on the right teams it looks like we got red team ready and we just need severity's teammate fiscope to head over to blue but he just <laughs> lagged out yeah we're, so we're having we're, some we're issues here on our guys. end it's the first round. The you can usual. never expect too much from, <laughs> from the first round. But that being said, we have the teams in the correct position. We just need to change the map over to Empire. I believe it's the first map, and then we'll be good to go, Laz. All right, let's go. Boom. 
boom here we go guys first game is up i know we uh i know it's been a little bit of a wait but uh that being said we're about to start it up i want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of the stream paradise halo i know that you do a lot of work with sean over at paradise halo but guys if you haven't checked them out go check them out they're absolutely incredible they can up your game in a heartbeat just watching uh watching the macro plays in halo 3 i think they have videos in halo 3 halo reach and uh halo 5 now it's like whatever game you play they have something for you yeah 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 i'm working on new stuff all the time uh, last awesome. leader, able to help out our leader you want to start the game up yes yeah, sir here we go all right hopefully these teams are ready there we go man it's always starting it's the match. great man it's first game times. first <laughs> first game first <laughs> round uh you know pharaoh to clutch you, you see him walking around and matchmaking occasionally i know the guy is an absolute grinder i'm gonna i'm gonna be curious i want to start off with him see what he does i'm not too familiar with each player i mean i recognize the gamer tags but you know they don't have the uh the clout that other players necessarily have so i don't know too much about their individual skill or or what they bring to the table but all i'm hoping for is a close game one a close game two and then a 25 24 game three and i don't think that's too much to ask for last i think that's i think that's appropriate for us to ask for but that being said we are on game one starting on empire we'll see pharaoh to clutch making his way towards the overshone it looks like both these teams opting for that one-to-one -one push and pharaoh's gonna win his original fight on the overshield and i want to see they're still having that dog fight over at the Ooh, camo they won both yeah and they win both of them it's absolutely clutch so now pharaoh's gonna have the overshield and we're gonna see his uh, his teammate with the camo as the camo player makes his way towards that top mid i think his teammate is having that fight in the red base he's gonna win that and this is what the overshield affords you right laz he can really just he wins that first fight and uh just be, he took a lot of damage if he was just a normal player he took a lot of damage in that first fight because of the overshield it allows him that free movement to go and challenge that player in turbine it gives him an early four to zero lead and four four kills that's two rounds of slays in doubles i mean that's a that's a great little buffer zone that you get in that first game and they are just starting off extremely hot yeah and it's they're just picking off all these slays and it's interesting to see that the blue team decided to push back into tower here after they just lost one player you would i would expect them to kind of expand out but finally got the first kill on the board there for blue team <laughs> they got the and... camo player yeah but uh that being said pharaoh was able to to grab the trade on that so a seven to one lead and you know last if you're in this situation right uh, i think you treat it a little bit similar to fours you just cannot get too freaked out this is game one right you have a lot of time left on the clock you just need to get together find the find the complementary angles and just help each other so far i'm seeing incredible positioning from pharaoh and sucka they seem to always have each other's help they're never right on top of each other but they're never more than one or two seconds away from helping each other they always seem to have a complimentary angle to each other i think that's why we see them have this eight to one lead that they do have at the moment yeah they're playing pretty expanded you see you see one of the players on the red lights while uh ferro to clutch is playing on the the turbine side of the map and they just kind of they're able to watch anyone in the center of the map anyone pushing either of their lanes luckily joey gets a good trade here i want to hop on board here with the blue team and see what they're going to do because right now it's crunch time we have the the customs coming up camo and custom Right, Severity I, I just, looks like he's ready for the overshield. I think he just got some unfortunate timing mm. on that. He did not get the overshield. Pharaoh is going to be able to clutch that out for his team as we see the camo fight go. And I think this, uh, how do you say that, man? I, I'm, I'm terrible with gamer tags. D scoped? Is that what it is? Oh, my. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, D scoped. My, I, am, I am terrible. The things that this. everyone couldn't do in Halo 4, you know? <laughs> yeah. D scoped was able to find that trade on camo, but I think Pharaoh and Sucka are starting to feel themselves a little bit. You know, when you get this 13 to 3 lead, it, it almost feels as if you're invincible at this point, right, Laz? You can just go, you can push whatever you want to push. It, it doesn't really matter if you don't get the trade out. You have that affordability, which maybe we'll start to see them play a little bit more loose mm. with their positioning. So far, it seems as if they've had had uh, that solid positioning they always have the correct angles with each other now we might see them play a little bit stronger towards their, towards their individual talents as we see pharaoh just immediately push out the lights finds the player off spawn finds the five shots gets the killing spree he's heating up 16 and three the pharaoh to clutch and sucka just looking like they are primed and ready there goes another big two. win right there yeah absolutely so I, I want to see blue team slow it down and, and I either just pick one fight. 
I don't want to see them kind of try to fight their own 1v1s right now. I think they need to just isolate one of the red players, and it's doable because we've seen red team is kind of playing pretty expanded. They're together, but they're not side by side hugging each other. So they should be able to isolate one fight and then collapse in the second player. And they have to do it now because the custom and the OS is going to be up in the next cycle here. It's eight. 13. You know, I think the big difference is, Laz, is I think this red team, they've really done a, a wonderful job at making sure they're the first initial, they're they're the ones that initiate the fights, right? So when you play that expanded role, when you're playing away from each other but still have each other's help, it's imperative that you're able to find the opposing team, get those first shots in, relay that information to your team. When you take the first shots, that's when you're in a dangerous situation. Like, Pharaoh is across the map from Sucker right now, and that player, I think Severity, was able to get the first shots on him, isolate him, out in the back tower do what we're talking oh. about <laughs> that was, that was a close almost one. blew their own camo out <laughs> yeah but they get the camouflage and you know this would be the the most incredible comeback in, in halo history if they, if they do make this happen down 21 to 4. but well, they get the overshield i guess they, they, they actually got the uh, red team got the os camo got the went to blue team let's see what this camo player is gonna do yeah we see i think d scopes over in this sneaky let's see move on so they, they have their there isolated 1v1s this is this is right here they can collapse on the outside player camo uh, there it is boom now they can focus on the os player right and you see i think they ever since they got that first initial pick they got these two teammates separated out and and where they don't have each other's help right away awesome. you see them playing a much uh slower pace and they're they're playing at a more comfortable speed for them i think that's really allowed them just to start heating up i mean when Let's it was go. like a 21 to 4 now it's 21 to 7. we never know what can happen guys they still have triple the lead but uh, if they get the next couple of slays, they get the next overshield. I think it's going to be they have to get the next overshield and camo. They're probably going to have to split out at one point, get control of both those power ups, and just start swaying the the game into their favor. But that said, Pharaoh finds a kill across the map. Severity is in trouble. He's just trying to stay. Oh alive. my oh. goodness! <laughs> <laughs> just, you just hate little, to see it, uh, but yeah, you know it's, it's still a trade. <laughs> that that could have gone worse. Absolutely. Well, we have about another what, 30 seconds until this camo and overshield comes up. So that means this blue team really has to find some individual picks. They, they don't have any advantage from the power ups so far. They do find the one. And like I said, I think I think the big indicator is that this red team, this, these ditto bros, they've gotten they've gotten a little too comfortable. I think they're starting to play a, a lot more individually. They're not really getting the same angles that they were getting before. That being said, when you have the lead, you know, you only need two, two kills. You're eventually going to win out those fights. You're eventually going to find out your trade. But uh, Pharaoh is going to shoot the barrel, finds one, trying to find the second. He knows he has camo somewhere. He's looking for him. Oh my, he's just trying his best to stay alive. This camo player is dipsy doozy. Oh my and goodness. He tries to get away. Can't quite do it. 25 to 9 gonna be wow. our first score line in game one. Pharaoh to clutch and sucka absolutely putting on a performance there. Slowed down a little bit towards the end, but I mean when it's 21 to 4, you're doing something right. Oh uh, and I mean, I want to take a look at these stat lines real fast. Uh, last 15 and 5 and 10 and 5, five respectively. Mm -hmm. Great job by the team to make sure that they're just constantly helping each other. We see them have 10 assists between each other. And I think that's a really great indicator. What what assists are you looking towards uh, getting into? It's like, you know, I, in, uh, I think in 4v4, you usually want to be on a slayer around that 40 assist mark. Like, that means you did a really great job on your team shot. You're always there. In twos, what, what do you think that, uh, that assist column, what should it be adding up to to show that you were really team shotting well together, that you're doing what was needed to win the game? I feel like anything over half, right? You want, like, over half. If you can get, they were at how many? 10 right there? So I think about that much. We saw them taking a lot of 1v1 battles and, and winning them. So that kind of obviously translates into what we're seeing with the assist. You're going to get less of a team shot when you're winning your one. But yeah, I mean, the more the, the, more the better, right? The more assists yeah, I you're think, getting. I think the indicator was is that when you have that 7 and 3, so they had 10 assists. I think most of those assists that they got in the game was players that were trying to get away from fights, right? It wasn't even, um, it was like one player would lose their, they would not win their individual fight, and then the other player would just come, they take that up, the other angle, find the player that was trying to run away for their life and get the kill, and then they just won a lot of their individuals. And I think that's true. I think if, uh, if the if the beginning was a little bit closer, I think we'd see a little bit closer to that 13, 15 assist mark.
that being said i mean it, there's not much you can nitpick from the red team they did start playing a little bit more solo towards the end but i think any any team just naturally starts to do that when you build a lead as the such that they had towards that uh towards that game one yeah so in the chat i'm seeing and i'm getting messages from both teams actually saying that there was supposed to be no radar and we were talking about that before oh. the chat yeah, that's our fault man uh so i guess we should probably we'll get some verification i think that's our fault i was looking at the rule book I'm, i probably misread it my apologies yeah my if the apologies. rule book say no radar then then we're down for that i think i was under the assumption that we're using the same rule sets that we used in the previous tournament which did have radar we were using oh, no, it, it says it's off man we we were says just it's off we are totally just misplaced. Misread it. We apologize. That's great then. So let's uh let's uh let's say let's see what the teams want to do, right? And uh if you guys want to replay, replay that we can one, absolutely we can do that. If they want to move on to game two, that's totally Sorry about that, our fault. Yeah, that's absolutely our fault. Rip. <laughs> We're back on it. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah, got a warm up game, okay? Appreciate you two guys coming in here right away and telling us, hey. You're doing this wrong and we're like oh we appreciate that <laughs> yeah. uh that's too bad so for sure so it's you checked 100 percent. it's no radar yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. we we apologize okay. for the mix-up guys that's what we wanted it anyways right we we're like this is this is kind of like the community settings anyways everyone runs right. no radar we everyone do it loves like that. no radar That being said, guys, uh, you know, we're, we're always going to have these growing pains in the beginning of the tournament. This one's our fault. Uh, we're going to do a replay of the game one so we can have those correct settings. Um, guys, if there's anything else wrong, you know, just start team killing or something. We'll, we'll pick up the queue. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll do a replay of that game one. We apologize for the delay. All right, I think we're ready though. Um, unless I didn't turn off the radar, but I well, here let's let's get let's get a ruling real fast. Um, I want to make sure if we could get a ruling on making sure whether we need to do a replay or if we can move on to game two. Um, we'll we'll tune into that real fast. Um, yeah, I'm gonna assume it should be a replay or or we'll move on to game two and then revisit Empire if it needs to go to that game three. We just like play it like that. But yeah, replay would probably be best. That's what, oh yeah, fair clutch I'm reading in the chat. He's suggesting kind of the same thing, but yeah, let's, let's get an official ruling just to make sure Joey and, and then we'll move on. Cause a replay would probably would be the, the fairest thing though. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll do a replay, replay real fast of Empire. So, you know, they, they get a little warm up game guys. That's, that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> and uh, we'll, right, we'll here we go, that. let's run it back. <laughs> we'll run it right back. <laughs> uh, always always the uh, the small things that get us in the beginning right mm -hmm. so let's see if, if the, the strategy changes because we saw the camo afforded them the opportunity blue team afforded blue team the opportunity to actually isolate that battle because the camo player had to go basically straight across the middle of the map to meet his you know his teammate out in turbine that you know you can't really do that easily without camo we'll see Absolutely. what the, anything changes up here well, they opt to go for that two-man push towards the overshield. Pharaoh's going to have they a hell won. of a battle, and they win that original. It's Sucka's going to be able to get that camo for free. If we can move on to his POV, I want to see what he does with this camo, what kind of positioning he takes in order to try to backsmack this overshield. Because, I mean, now that I feel like the camo even has more free movement, right? They can just try to get back. Oh, my lord. He almost got in position. Man. I was holding my breath for just a mm. second. This stick came out, but didn't quite connect 2-0 lead for D scoped and severity. And they're just they're keep they keep rolling on. I think they that game one gave them a nice little warm up and they're just going <laughs> to they're going to keep doing what they need to do. Yeah, they had good. You know, they almost got that that collapse on the red bend there. Just maybe a couple of nades on the floor might have been more beneficial but they're trading off now red team has a score slay on the board here now they have two okay, okay. well Saga immediately pushes back in gets that kill on that player in the base 
moving on with Sucka, seeing what he's doing. If we can move over towards Pharaoh, I think he's about to engage the enemy team. There's two players over at that bend. He finds one with the nade shot. The team help is coming from top mid. They're in great positions to help each other. And it seemed they had that little slow start from this in the start lads, but uh, this is this is what we were seeing in the beginning of the game. This is what yeah, uh, that was unfortunate. I think this is where they're comfortable. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I think blue team had a 2v1 collapse on Pharaoh 2 clutch there, but they took a little bit too long and then it, you know, red team flipped the switch on them. I think that's the key, right? The if, you, if you know there's a player that's isolated that you have the opportunity to push, I mean, you immediately push, right? You can't let them get any time with how fast you can move in Halo 5. It seems as if you can find your positioning easily enough. And now they still take these long angles, but both these players are one shot. Uh, Sucka is looking towards the end. Pharaoh's in the turbine getting shots. They find one. The one player is able to move on out, but if Sucka has different plans in mind, he's chasing them. I think Pharaoh's just sitting in that turbine. He's eventually going to find that one shot player in the in the side and so far man it's like uh i feel like we were seeing an improved version of pharaoh and sucker they had that slow start but ever since man i've been just massively impressed with the play that we've seen pharaoh was able to get the overshield sucker's in position for the camouflage i don't believe i think d scope has the camouflage already so we'll see what position he takes I actually move on with him as he's going to be the impact player and see if he can get behind one of these overshield players. That being said, if I am Pharaoh, if I am Sucka, it's like I don't want to give them the opportunity for that camera to get all oh, my. Well, ignore me because that, that stick comes out, finds the camo player, and now all of a sudden this player that's stuck in tower is in trouble. An overshield player is looking for him. He's going to try his best to get away. He finds the better positioning, but the overshield still on that player. He's eventually going to be trying to find those shots on Pharaoh. Pharaoh's shooting right back. They get each other weak, and then eventually the help from Sucka comes in. And so far, I think beautiful teamwork between these two players. Excellent 2v1 collapse. Yeah, but now they're just ready. They're soaring top middle and just collapsing on the other blue player. And that's just keeping blue team on a split spawn cycle. If you just kind of watching, you know, once you get numbers, you fly at the other two. And then that's how you make it difficult for them to have any kind of cohesion as a team. They're always splitting. Now nice. they have a chance. It looks like blue team's here, you know, in turbine and in top middle. We're and immediately, trades. yeah, the trades, I just, you just can't afford to get trades at this moment, right? You want to keep this game somewhat close. I think if you let the red team get to 20 kills uh, and you're and you're not within those five kills, I think it's going to be a dangerous game to play. And so far, they have about their score doubled, seven kill. I mean, make it a six kill lead at the moment. Sucka trying to do his best to survive a severity. He's hunting him down. He's going to move himself over towards the tower. But Sucka, I mean, Sucka's doing his best. He's, he's dips doozling over in this Tower 3. Severity is just looking for him. Can't quite find him. And he was able to buy enough time for his teammates to come in. They find another trade. And so oh all God. four players here battle right off for the camo. Right. So and maybe I think the other two players can spawn and go outside. Yeah, I think the spawners are immediately going to move outside. And I think Pharaoh's going to win that race. He was able to get oh, the overshield goodness. and he finds that kill over across the map. And now Sucka has his camo and he's trying to isolate out the other player. The camo it of... gives you that, uh, it gives you that no auto aim. I think, you know, sometimes you just get that first shot on the player and it's so hard to reversal a camo flash player, especially up close. It just keeping your reticle on them can be a hassle as Pharaoh once again isolates out. There's another a lot player. of body seeing... disrespect coming out here from Pharaoh to clutch. He's killed D scope twice and both times he has taken time out of his game. To show some body disrespect. So a lot of confidence coming out here, red team. I'm gonna see if they can keep rolling to the victory here, because you never know. <laughs> you just never yeah, know. You know. Sometimes the body disrespect it can uh it can motivate other players to play at the top of their game. But so far it's just if this thing keeps going the way that it's going with Pharaoh shooting the hot fives like he's doing right now, I just don't see this going anywhere else as he's gonna find another six shots on that player and suck us in position to get the cleanup. And you know what we really saw why this game got out of control is the red team, they eventually won that battle in the tower. The one player took a he survived for a long period of time but that long period of uh time of, that he survived it allowed them to be on split spawns for i think about two or three cycles where both the players just weren't up on the same map at the same time and i think red team just did an appropriate job of p applying their pressure making sure they found their kills while they knew that there was no help that could be found sucka finds uh sucka's trying to find severity over at the end pharaoh is going to be able to get the five shots on d scope and then sucka eventually comes back finds severity next overshield and camo going to be coming 
coming up relatively soon. Only three more kills necessary for this red team to take the victory. Scope it's interesting to, to see off. them continue to stay out here because we know that the camo was up first and the OS is going to be delayed from the last cycle. All four players are fighting for the... Uh, for the camo if we remember so it's interesting to see that if any of these players were to recognize that remember that they could have got a free camo right now because that camo has just been sitting there and now we're gonna go for it later and blue team gets out with it <laughs> hey, by oh the my nick. goodness <laughs> by, by a nick of time they gotta make a play right out. now hey that overshield player is just gonna find them yet yeah, yeah too little kill. too late so i would have liked to have seen them remember that and actually just you know, red team was outside waiting for the overshield. It would have been great to see blue team just say, hey, you know what? Let's go for the camo first. It's going to be up first. And they could have got that and then used it to push outside maybe and trade with the overshield because they're probably going to get the overshield at that point for sure. I oh, see a little bit of a better stat line from the blue team. Last radius able to put up a little bit more of a fight. But Pharaoh, two questions. Saga so still fairly strong, uh, you know. That's about as even as a stat line you can ask for 13 and 12 between the two of them. They're obviously helping each other nine assists between them. And I think uh, I think those power ups playing just uh, a big difference towards the end of the day. They got most of the they, I think they got every overshield or they didn't get the original one. Right. So they didn't get the original overshield, but they were able to get every overshield after that. And I think they split the camos with the blue team. And at that point, it just seems uh, too little too late for right. the team to really get back into it. Mm hmm. So well, I want to see what what is our next map on this. We uh, have Plaza map. next underway, I believe, and then followed by Regret. Plaza and Regret. Well, I, I think Diddle Bros are better. I don't think they want to play Regret. I think they're going to go full out here on the Plaza. But that being said, Plaza, a couple interesting notes on Plaza. It's one of the easier maps to spawn trap, uh, especially in twos, right? So you can you can really find superior positioning if you get a guy in blue and a guy at the lr you can really just spawn trap them bottom nest over and over and over again and uh that's something maybe that we'll see from pharaoh to clutch uh but yeah i think plaza especially in the twos world it's just you can predict the spawns easiest uh, there's not that many spawn points and it's very easy to influence where players are going to spawn so the biggest thing you just have to stay alive if you're going to find a if they're going to find a kill you have to make sure you trade out a kill with it you cannot be put on a cycle because the second you put on a cycle that's when the teams start to play a little bit faster they start getting in there and they're spawn trapping positions and then all of a sudden you find yourself spawning bottom nest over and over again with a sniper sitting at the a sniper sitting at glass or a sniper we're sitting at blue that's just watching the lift and you're just gonna get your head taken off every single time yeah you don't really want to do that so i'm, I'm definitely gonna be looking for that the bottom nest spawn trap and i'm sure we'll see a lot of you know maybe a loop spawn trap we can focus on we're gonna see a lot of people spawning blue if they're just controlling that sniper getting control of like the lr area but i'm ready to see how they're gonna play if, if you're ready to yeah I'm get back ready. into let's it let's get back into it let's get this game two going I want to see what Pharaoh to Clutch is going to bring this time. He was, he was absolutely shooting some missiles in game one. I'm excited to see what he brings in game two. That's what you want to start off with then? Give some yeah, Pharaoh let's to give Clutch some, some love on the start? Yeah, let's give Pharaoh some love. I think he's going to be that player that's going to beeline towards that sniper rifle. And here we go. Plaza HCS, man. Plaza is such a good map. You know, no one gives the appreciation. I love Plaza. That Halo yeah. 5. Halo 5 has some pretty darn good maps, man. in general i mean plaza i mean every every map here i mean even even empire empire still i mean it's not the traditional twos map but it still works extremely well just because you can you can wrote where you can rotate yourself you have to decide whether you're playing for that camel or for that overshield plaza is so great because the spawn system truth's an amazing map truth's always been an amazing map. guys halo 5 what a banger of a game guys just amazing maps all around is the stream actually well, I feel like the stream is to update and show the gameplay right now. It is. <laughs> you're yeah, just, yeah. you're a little behind last. Remember that the stream has that 15 oh, second delay. Right. Having said, right. Sucka did get the uh, sniper rifle. Pharaoh to Clutch was able to burn off that overshield. Uh, so they're going to, both teams are going to know the time, but the control decidedly in Pharaoh and Sucka's, uh, 
on the game is definitely in their favor at the moment. Noob combo and snipe rifle in hand. Sucka finds the nasty shot over in S4. You can find this is what we're talking about. These players are now split and they know exactly where their spawn is. You see Pharaoh, you see Sucka, they're immediately looking towards that loop. I'd like to see them maybe play a hair a bit faster. Don't let them get in a position to get out. But Pharaoh sees both players. He has a noob combo. He's going to find an easy kill on one. Hopefully, it's the noob combo just barely misses. But Sucka is able to pick up the slack, gets in with that sniper rifle finds that kill and all of a sudden they're just they're just in a dangerous position once again and you know with twos i think the influence you just it's so easy just to predict the spawns we see pharaoh he he understood that there was a blue spawner that's going to be coming up he was just looking towards that hotel and did his best and then he's just going to let suck up uh, afford suck up the opportunity just to find a different position to find his lane into that sniper rifle uh, with that sniper rifle find a lane that can look in towards that flowers and just pick off these players as pharaoh just <laughs> hits down another five shot gonna steal that kill from sucka as they are just pushing on through these players are in trouble and once again it's just you have to find a trade or you have to die at the around the same time or else your uh, your teammates just going to be in trouble off spawn but pharaoh i think if you look over in that back left he's he's given a little bit more of that body disrespect these players uh i think they they're starting to heat up this is definitely a map that you can see that they feel very comfortable on Pharaoh doing yeah, his best. Yeah, I was going to say that they had an opportunity there to clear out the blue and then set up the nest spawn trap, but it looks like red team has just been kind of going side by side and making sure that they don't lose that sniper, and they're going to slay him out here for this next overshield. This is they have to get very shots. interesting that they actually got the overshield. The blue team, they were both top center side by side standing on the OS, something that you typically just don't want to ever want to do, right? You want to be near it and have someone baiting it, not both standing on it side by side, but they were able to actually pull it out. Yeah, they were able to pull it, but I think Pharaoh and Saga just felt comfortable because Pharaoh had, combo had that combo, right? He could just move himself in position. That being said, I would like to see Pharaoh maybe just maintain that window presence that he had. We saw the one player that immediately went towards it. He got the two. They immediately just team shot him to death, and the other player was still there. I think Pharaoh could have just maybe played a little bit more forward towards that window, found the pistol shots, maintained a little bit of a charge in that over uh, the charge in that noob combo, and then get the overshield on top of that. Just maintain even more control, and I think that's the stuff that separates you know the top pro players from the uh from the rest really is is how they can just use everything on the map to their advantage right we so we need to hop on board here with with pharaoh two clutch to see he just picked up the sniper rifle and he's he's got two players on him when the loop spawn he looks like he's rotating it over to the blue to the hotel and trying to live I'd like to see him actually get in there and stop challenging. Oh, there, who was okay, that player over at Garbage Truck, man? He absolutely wanted him. Sucka is eventually going to get him. That severity is going to go down. Pharaoh to clutch still has That's a sniper why you don't rifle. chase. That's why you don't chase. <laughs> oh, man. The LR versus the sniper rifle. Sniper rifle is going to win as Pharaoh hits that nasty no scope, is able to back him on down. And now they immediately know that the other player is LR, right? And they just have him trapped. Pharaoh had to pick one, or, one, one lane one, uh, to the left or to the right they opt to go through the left so that player is going to stay alive just for a little bit longer with that being said 13 to 5 they feel comfortable they have positioning they have what's needed uh they have what what would you, what would you say the keys to success to really just hold out this game you have uh -oh. the snipe rifle but uh right but we just lost zach now so i like i like fair to clutch kind of backing up playing his life because the os is going to come up pretty soon I think he's checking to make sure no one's on loop. That's like something he knows he's worried about. But it looks like both of the blue players stayed on blue side. I think they just got that overshield and again. they just grabbed the overshield. That was huge. Ferris to clutch almost blamed the, the player going, but he just missed it. And they're able to secure that last that second OS in a row now, I believe. Right. He did that great job of checking the loop, right? He wanted to make sure no one was there. I think after he clears that or he feels maybe he felt a little bit more confident that it was cleared, he could have rotated that sniper towards the posters where we'd have that beautiful angle into flower store and top gold that you could just really hit that sniper shot at anyone that was going to come towards him and then immediately pull out his pistol and finish whatever he needed to finish. Unfortunately, uh, he had to hit the head. The head didn't hit and uh, they lose the overshield. But that being said, it doesn't seem as if they're fretting these overshields at all. Because every time the opposing team gets an overshield, it seems as if they don't really have that much trouble at burning it off the body relatively quick. Yeah, they've been able to smelt that OS guy every single time, you hate to see it. So that's the you know that's the key right there for the next cycle of the, of the OS. If the game lasts that long, another minute, Whoever grabs that OS, you know, they need to not be melted. They need to get to a spot quickly where they can, like, 2v1 a player and steamroll the snowball. They at least get a snowball going if they want to stay alive in this tournament here. 
And let's see over Maybe here. We can hop on board with someone from blue team and see how they're gonna close out and try to stay alive in this in this game. I know there's a, a Nest player who just spawned and the other player's in a 1v1, he got picked off. So there's a guy S4 and I don't think that they know he's S4 if he can play very slow. Looks like he's gonna try to isolate this 1v1, he needs to win it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. He, he tried to, he tried going to the right to say like that he saw the LR bullets come in and then you know, just a half second later all the nades coming, that player was in a, in a sticky situation, wasn't able quite to stay alive. Yeah. But Pharaoh once again moving into that fast position. You see, that's the kind of speed I like to see. He has the LR, he knows that they're spawning in this backyard, back loop area. He immediately pushes the advantage, he finds one kill and almost finds the second one as those pistol shots just, just a tad bit off, having said Saga still has a sniper rifle and it seems as if he's gonna put that thing to work. So he finds another kill and now it's gonna be up to Saka and Disco. You know, once again, it seems as if any time a red player is in a sticky situation, they just immediately have the team help there. He hits and he hits the nice sniper rifle shot to wow. end the game 25 to 9. Little bro is doing an absolutely incredible job. Gonna win two to zero in your round one we're going to try to get our round two matchup going as soon as possible guys but that stat line looking oddly familiar from the first couple games as i think what we see 15 and 10 kills respectively and uh you know so far i think they've done a great job in making sure that they don't get themselves too out of position that they keep themselves in the correct spots to to really help each other and so far it's just solid fundamentals that that really uh lead them to those victories yeah, that's, that was interesting. 25 to 9. So we got Regret coming up next. And, you know, we only have one thing to worry about in the center of the map. That's it. In the well, combo. I, the, on card 2. <laughs> there is no Regret coming up Just because like, uh, they won 2 to 0. Oh, that's it. Right. We already got the 2-0. Yeah. Man. A 2-0 victory from Diddle that's Bros. Right. Absolutely. Uh, great job by them. 25 and 10 in game 1. 25 and 9 in game 2. That being said, guys, we're going to get our round 2 up and ready. Uh, guys just stick with us uh i think we have some uh some paradise halo videos to to lead us on in between these breaks I, i'm not sure we'll we'll figure it out i'll let i'll let the guys up top figure that out for us but that being said we'll be right back welcome back everyone we have our round to action ready to go and if you guys were watching the paradise halo video you might have seen a familiar face and he's in this round to be played proximity and i believe his teammate is going to be fsc exodus going to be taking on beastish and yaddy t in this best of three i am joined with callus uh, as we just saw a, a great round one we're moving on to round two what can you say about these players uh, before we start Laz? They're all really talented players. I definitely recognize all four of these players' names. Uh, played with them and against them, you know, in matchmaking and had my butt handed to me many times. And uh, so, yeah, that's definitely exciting. I believe we had a substitute, right? Because Proximity is subbing for, for Switch, right. right? So if you guys aren't familiar, right, uh, with the substitution rules, you are allowed to substitute. But as soon as a substitute is put in place, they uh, they replace them for the entirety of the tournament. So I believe Switch wasn't able to make it today. So uh exodus had to go out and find a replacement and uh you know i think he found a replacement that can live up to swish swish is an incredible player and uh, i think proximity has some shoes to fill but if there's anyone that is capable of doing so he is a player that is in that uh that uh, ballpark but that being said we're going to start off on a rig we'll try to get these games started as soon as we can we are guaranteed to be playing truth as well that's going to be our game too and if it's needed which guys with uh with how stacked this lobby is it might just be needed like i said i mean we never know uh empire would be our game three but rig let's talk about rig real fast and let's get this game started on up to keep the keep the people from waiting too long as uh rigs in an important map i think it's a it's a camouflage and a sniper rifle that's going to be playing an impact on this map you want to make sure that you're paying attention uh to that camo time make sure you're on top of it and make sure you have that sniper rifle and taking powerful positions with said sniper rifle yeah, we're gonna be looking at them, you know, setting up, you know, bunker spawn traps and carbine spawn traps and basically just collapsing on them very quickly and whatever team can pull away with that, you know, the camo, especially I'm wondering if they're gonna be stacking that, you know, the power up and the power weapon or if they're gonna be kind of, you know, splitting them up so one player has a sniper, the other one has, you know, the camo. We'll see how that 
how that works out absolutely let's because all four of these players can roam and, and shoot yeah let's get this game started on up Laz. I'm, I'm excited to see what these guys are gonna do that being said I, I like what you said right it's gonna be a lot of a carbine and bunker spawn traps making sure that you're just rinsing and repeating so you go you find the players and carbine you immediately find those kills you leave a player a little bit back just to make sure they don't spawn at that carbine again but most of the time they're just gonna spawn at the bunker you find yourself in that tower to that engine to that white corner position just shooting on those players right. that come on up that being said i think it's so important to make sure that you're not put on a cycle on this map a map where you can guarantee spawns fairly easy and you have a sniper rifle that has clean looks towards those spawns you got to make sure let's you get hop on board out. here with someone on red team to see who's going to grab that oh, we forgot about the scatter shot too who's yeah, going to get this shot, spawn yeah. for the camo someone on red team probably exodus looks like it he got the spawn for the camo he didn't go for it quickly because they're shooting him that's really smart Blue team is just instantly ready to, to put shots on him. They didn't prioritize shooting it down. Yeah, but I mean, he did. They did a great job of backing him down. But that being said, they uh, they lost their fight. So the camouflage probably going to be going in the favor. This right team, I think proximity just got it. We'll see what he's able to do with that camouflage. They are nading him out, trying to get him. Beastish is eventually able to find him. That's what happens with that player that stayed alive for just a bit longer in basement. They allowed his teammate to spawn up over in that bunker, find a position order to get that burn on the camouflage. That's going to be playing an important impact in this game. They would have gotten away with that camouflage along with getting those of initial first two kills they probably would have been able to get the snipe rifle to make something happen but they do a great job at finding these kills isolating out players i think they isolated proximity twice now exodus did get a snipe rifle away so let's hop on with him and see if he's going to be able to find a position with that snipe rifle to take some heads because he has a player in tower and he immediately does it. he kills beast and i think we just saw that scatter shot fall off of his body and now you can see exodus he already knows the carbine spawns coming and what he did is he pushed that right away Laz, in order to make sure he knew that his teammate wasn't going to spawn on top of them they find that kill at carbine and allows proximity to come in and that's a beautiful job at isolating out your gunfights that was interesting it was kind of risky i thought to go back there but he's got he does have a sniper and he executed they could have also just kept continuing to because they split they had a bunker guy now it looks like blue team is back inside of the map we're going to see if they're able to at least get one pick but we see exodus soaring by confidently lost his teammate though 2v1 he used to live here He's living, he, you know, ideally take a take a body with you as he's trying his best to yeah. survive. He hits a sniper shot, but uh, unfortunately missed times the drop back. This uh, that sticky grenade going to be able to take him out as Yaddy is able to grab this sniper rifle. Three bullets to work with. And so far, right, we talked about uh, you talked about the danger of the of what they did that aggressive play at Carbide. And they let them spawn bunker and they gained back their inside control. And it was so important. It was critical that they found that next kill at Carbide. They couldn't allow them to stay. I mean, that, that, that next kill over on the inside of the map they couldn't allow them to stay alive mm. but they did just that and now all of a sudden it, it's starting to look a little dangerous as these teams are starting to yeah that was unfortunate <laughs> i was i was hoping to see the sniper rifle take you know bring himself to a, maybe a tower position to get ready for this camel bait but he took himself you know he went down really quickly yeah, and then, and I'm uh, not sure when that camo was up because it was late from the yeah, first cycle. Burned, right? I think I, I, saw, I saw proximity burn that. So he, he stood over in the bottom half of the map. He stood on top of that uh, camouflage. They got it, but they immediately heard him grab it and they just chucked nades down into that sewers. Found a couple nades, took him on out. That uh, scatter shot in the hands of sniper Beastish uh, with the sniper rifle coming back on up. They're starting to make their way towards this white hall but beastish is in position to find shots and they're gonna get two kills sniper and the sniper rifle now i'm not sure what do you think about this last he immediately makes his way to carbine he's gonna block that out and he's gonna opt to give them an inside spawn if you're in that position do you prefer to have that inside control maybe play aggressive towards that bunker or are you doing the same thing blocking out that carbine spawn and playing that sniper on the outside yeah i would say like if you can bring it inside it's probably more beneficial but then maybe he's thinking, you know, I don't have numbers. I want to rotate this way. He does. The, the good thing is bringing it outside gives you the opportunity to at least play the sniper off the map really easily if you get pushed. So because the score is, is neck and neck right now. So that you definitely don't want to give up a, a full ammo sniper. And it looks like right now he won't be able to play it if he needs to. 
I believe that was. I was thinking I think maybe that Daddy was... was the one that brought that sniper rifle outside, and then he was the one that died with it. Proximity was able to grab it, and now all of a sudden, Proximity is in a prime position. He has them spawn trapped at bunker, and he's this looking for great. a second player. And that was a that was a great position for Proximity to find that just that original headshot, and now he's able to move himself in the and just work with his teammates. They have him spawn back bunker, and spawning back bunker with a sniper in that tower drill plat position, it, it's a scary feeling, man. It's just you, you don't really have many places you can go and not get a not get a shot taken at you. Yep, and they're already cycling through for this camo coming up. You think uh, Proximity got the last one, right? So you should have the time ready. I, I only see jump one blue on player. And grab it. Where is that other blue player? I think he just yanked that camouflage underneath Proximity. <laughs> I think Proximity was uh, wanted to make sure he had the help for Manny over in that uh, over in that hallway, and that might just cost them as they lost the sniper rifle. Beastish was able to throw that grenade, and one thing in Halo Five, guys, that grenade wow. when you throw it, it doesn't light you up, so you can always throw that grenade, and uh, they they're not quite sure where it comes from. That uh, causes Proximity to miss his sniper rifle bullet, and now all of a sudden this control that Proximity and uh, Exodus had, it's looking it's looking shaky now as beast just has uh, a quarter of a camouflage left and uh just about i think four bullets of a sniper rifle to work with uh that's a that's a great position to be i guess i apologize one bullet of the sniper rifle but that being said they got about full camo usage they're able to stop the bleeding that they were in for the moment and find the the team shot to take down proximity great job by these players just to keep this game close enough so we'll just wait for this next camouflage wait for this next sniper rifle get control of it find a couple kills uh, in a row string them together get yourself back into this game yeah this is like the next lull here the sniper's gonna come up first so we're, I mean, I don't really want to see any teams kind of setting up. They, they need to start moving around and getting some slates, but they know that Exodus has that scatter shot in the back pocket. So, All right, that's a dangerous. That's really good that they're controlling those white halls with that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that that grenade that he just chucked in the back of the base uh, eventually finds its mark. And, you know, that's some great repositioning from Exodus. That player had no idea that he dropped in the basement. Was immediately going to rechallenge from the short haul. He does just that, and then he finds a five shot on Beastish across the map. Exodus, top gun, top grenades, top scatter shot. What do you need from this man to do more? He gives proximity to sniper rifle. We know that his snap ability with that sniper rifle is going to be so critical. And now I think this is where if you're in uh, the shoes of Beastish and Yaddy T, you cannot let this next sniper rifle go into the hands of Exodus and Proximity. You make sure that thing gets burned or you make sure that you find that control as Proximity is doing his best to find these players in the bottom half of the map. The camouflage is up and he's going to be able to secure that for his team. Camouflage in hand, sniper rifle in the pocket. What else does he need to do as these players are spawning bunker and all of a sudden it was looking 15 to 13 I believe and all of a sudden it's 19 to 13 with full control and it's going to take a lot for that to to, to move anytime soon as yeah he did throw a beautiful oh game. yeah they lost their tower player but it's totally fine that they lost their, their tower player right they still have control here he just needs to keep baiting this angle and he's waiting for his teammate to spawn and he knows okay if it's, my teammate spawn behind me and carbine we know they're both in bunker so I would like to maybe see the tower player. He could definitely have rotated around if his teammate's on tower. I can't tell though with no radar. I'm not sure where his teammate is, but could have been an opportunity there to have one guy tower and the sniper can rotate to the white hall for this second pick. Right, and the proximity just not quite able to find that kill on Yaddy T. But that being said, they extended out their lead to to an extent to that they could probably feel a little bit comfortable. They can afford to die a couple times. That being said, now all they have to do, right? You're, you're four kills away from winning the game. Beastish has the sniper rifle on the other team. Just make sure if you die that that kill gets traded out. And uh, you're going to be in prime position as Beastish just you know if you would have skipped that shot and hit it when he was over that edge of two, but absolutely sick. But Ooh, he's going to miss flank. those two sniper rifle shots. And, uh, but he does eventually find proximity, but Exodus is doing exactly what we talked about. He just finds the trade, and he's, he's super comfortable with that, right? He, he doesn't feel as if he needs to go and 1v2 this team. He's just going to do his best to stay alive, let his teammate come into position, refill, and then when they have the opportunity to team shot, they do just that. Another trade on the board, and this is absolutely prime position. They are playing the scoreboard, right? They, they understand that they don't have to get their prime positions. They don't have to play for a spawn trap. They just need to make sure they stay alive, wait for each other's helps, and find trade after trade. Just make Make sure you don't die and that you're not put on a cycle and they're doing an absolutely wonderful job of maintaining their lead at the moment 
They really are. I want to hop on board with blue team here and see how they're going to react. They need one more death and they lose, but the camo's dropping in two seconds right now. I'm wondering if they're able to snake this and live. They're going to have to not get it now, though, because they lost one player. I think that camo is still... This camo. Oh my goodness, Beastish just naded himself. Oh no. <laughs> I think he needs to just he needs to live here. They're doing a good job not dying. Yaddy T was able. It looks to... like they found the camo player. Yeah, they found him, but Yaddy T was able to stay alive. Uh, I mean, he wasn't able to kill that camouflage player. Ooh. I believe it's Exodus. I'm gonna hop on with Exodus because he uh, he has this camouflage. He he saw them going for that sniper rifle. He just threw the sticky grenade on it just to make sure they couldn't get it. He puts it back That's in bunker. That's such a smart uh, play. A smart Let's play, go. Man. Uh, it's absolutely. It's beautiful you know exodus he just knows that he he just has to play his opportunity it's only one kill needed right you don't need to give up a free death just try your best to stay alive for as long as possible let ex uh, let proximity get that sniper rifle and find the pick for your team he's doing an absolute wonderful job of just doing these little strafes to make sure that these players can't quite hit him and he eventually buys the time for proximity to go find his position he gets the sniper rifle shot and although that's a beautiful job of just playing your life guys if you, if you need an example of how to play your life i think exodus just showed a premier example of that he, he played his life with the camouflage he knew he didn't need to get the kill he bought opportunity for for proximity to find better positioning and eventually find that critical shot to win that game but that being said an, an impressive game one from both these teams it, it was neck to neck uh for most of the game and then we saw just exodus and uh, proximity just take that extra step right they they just did it a tad bit better but we're moving on the truth and i expect uh i expect beastish and yaddy t to to respond back with a with a strong game yeah, that was super interesting. I would have had, I'm curious to see how that sniper connected for the last kill because we, we saw the camo guy just bobbing and, you know, juking everybody and making sure that they're, you know, nobody on the opposite team could just be patient. They needed to be mindful of blocking their angles from someone they can't see and then someone who's peeling their face or trying to. Right. But yeah, I think, was that was that Exodus who threw the, the plasma grenade? Yeah, to, it was Exodus. He threw the plasma grenade to, to boost out that sniper rifle at the last second, make sure that the opposing team couldn't get it. Because, I mean, it, when you have a lead like that, right, just making sure the opposing team can't get the camouflage, they can't get the sniper rifle, is so important. And remember, that life started with Yaddy T missing that last shot on, uh, on Exodus with that camouflage. So he stayed alive in the basement, was eventually able to reposition, got himself into the light corner, got his sticky grenades from that yellow box from staying alive naded out that sniper rifle in the basement let proximity get it and then stayed alive for about another 30 seconds as two players are trying to hunt him down let proximity reposition himself and find that final kill i, I cannot praise exodus enough for that last game that was absolutely incredible work from him that really was huge if he didn't do that who knows you know because proximity was able to get the sniper they still probably you know could have pulled out the win having the camo and just having to 2v1 somebody but we know that it wasn't going to be an easy pick because no one wants to be the last one to die in, in a TV2 or any Slayer game. So we're ready to roll into We got yeah. Truth coming up next, though. Yeah, true. Let's, Let's see get it, that man. One. I want to see this. There's no sniper rifle, just a camouflage to work with. There is a noob combo that's going to spawn in the top half of the map. We'll see if the players like to use that. It's usually about 50-50 that we see with these high-level players. Some of them decide, hey, I'm going to prioritize that noob combo. I want to get it. I want to get that. Uh, I want to have that advantage. Other players, they just uh, they opt to just really play their numbers, just try to be really fast on the spawns and, and not really worry about going out of their way to find the combo. And... I, I don't know. I, I love the combo. If you can go grab it, go grab the combo. It's it, it's the poor man's sniper huge. rifle, right? It's just, it tracks. <laughs> it, it makes them one shot. By the time it hits, you can switch to your pistol and just eventually just get them dead in about half a second. An incredible weapon to use. But that being said, I, let's, uh, let's get this truth started, man. Are we ready? We're good to go? Yeah, I think we're ready. All right, let's go. Let's jump on in. Who are you looking to start off with here, Gary? Uh, You know, I saw... Beast has dropped 11 kills. He went positive last game. I want to start. I want to start off with him right there. They're in the bottom position. They have to win this map. Tournament life on the line. They're playing against two impressive players. I'm not saying that Beast and Yaddy are not impressive players in their own right. I mean, they absolutely played uh, incredible. It's just I want to see them take that next step, and I want to see them do that by finding these opening two kills themselves in position getting that camouflage getting their power control and then eventually putting these guys on spawn i want to see a strong start from beastish and yaddy t in this uh, in this game too 
So we start off with Beastish. He's going to be making his way towards the camouflage. Exodus and uh, Proximity going to opt for a separated approach, letting this camouflage go for, I'd say, relatively free, right? They were able to hit the player with a grenade, but that's not going to do enough as Beastish was able to get away with the camouflage, find the kill on Proximity, and eventually stay alive in the top mid of the map. They're doing exactly what they need to do in order to keep this game in their favor. And now Beastish is trying to reposition himself to help his teammate. I know, Laz, I, maybe I would have liked to see him just jump up into that window maybe he could have helped yaddy t in time to make sure that it wasn't traded but anyway you know he finds the kill he maintains his camouflage as we see proximity he's in the top mid of that map he immediately went for that noob combo you can see that he's going to put some emphasis on it but beastish using that camouflage to freely move across the map and this is why you get camouflage on truth right it's so important that you prioritize getting that camouflage and that you stay alive with it or if you don't get it you immediately burn that player because they're just going to find superior positioning and they're going to single out a player and it's just it, it's always a three to four kill swing if that's if that uh, camouflage player is able to stay alive and beast is a great job at that and then they eventually find the team shot on proximity so uh this is a great redemption start from beast issue the ADT in game two yeah we're looking at blue team here is going to be establishing the pink control and the other and the other players just staying in, in a base so they, they already know it's going to be a carbine spawn trap they just got to fight it out try to secure one slay here and they'll be right ready for the next camo drop so we got a p3 position cross mapping there's the pick right there and they know okay this guy's in blue too they can easily leave car. I'm looking for the car player on blue team to leave and, and collapse into blue base. So we can get this 2v1 really quickly. <laughs> there it is. 2v1 not needed Perfect. as Beastish was. I guess he, he did come in and pull that player down, but uh, this is just an, a, a superb start from this blue team. You can tell that they really want to take advantage as we just, man, I think Beastish has yet to die yet. These players in red base are trying their best to key, uh, to find the kill, but Beastish is doing a great job. He knows that he's not the player that's in position that needs to find the kills, right? His job is just to stay alive and put down damage. He eventually finds proximity on the P Street, but man, a lot of the damage has been done. This next camouflage is going to be up right now. They need to play it on the piece. You cannot let Beastish and Yaddy T get this camouflage again. They will make absolute work of it if they're able to do so. Exodus was able to hear that player clamber on behind him. He's going to find that kill. I believe camouflage did just go into the hands of proximity, and he knows that he, knows that he needs to stay alive. He's trying his best to get away, but Yaddy T going to chase him on down and find that kill. Proximity just, just a hair bit away from staying alive with that camouflage. And they're just hunting. Look at this. I love the aggression. They are not letting them basically reconvene. They want to catch them on the splits before they can get together and have a cohesive team play. And so we just see Yaddy just sprinting across the map. They, we know we can. It's the same. It's essentially like a three down and a four before. There's only one player on the map that can get you. You know, there's nothing stopping you from taking middle routes. Oh my goodness. That nade just hit him right in the face. Right, twos is a great vessel for you to use to really learn how to play with numbers, right? Um, when there's one player down, you know there's only one player on the map. You can use that aggression that you wouldn't normally see in fours, but you can you can translate that gameplay into your 4v4 gameplay, right? It, you, this is a great uh, way to train yourself to play a bit more aggressive, a bit more faster when you do have numbers in those 4v4 situations. And that's why I love watching these twos tournaments, man. You just see these players that play so well together and use their numbers to their advantage. As we see Exodus and uh, Proxy. Great Maybe shots. To claw their way back into this game. Great shots by Exodus. Oh, another big. Wow. <laughs> oh Didn't even need the help yes. right there. Another big 1v1 win. And now. It's a little reversal. Probably getting <laughs> carbine spawned. Yeah. You see that recognition from Exodus to know that they're just going to immediately be in the carbine. He immediately pushes it. This is the kind of aggression that you need in order to come back from the lead that uh, that Beastish and Yaddy T put on. And Exodus, once again, just doing a wonderful job. However, this is almost like the... a master class of staying alive, man. He does a great job at always doing his best at staying alive. But unfortunately for them, they do eventually track him down. Find those skills. Camouflage is going to be coming up in the next about 10, 15 seconds less. Right. Yeah, I was wondering where, where the team help was for for Exodus as he was collapsing on that carbine spawn. And now it looks like the red team's got got the pink control. It looks like proximity is ready because he had the last camo, so he knows the exact timing for it. It should be dropping really soon in like two seconds. Right, and then you see he was constantly challenging until the camo flash came up, and that's where he's de-challenged. And that's the uh, that's why you always keep track of that camo time, right? When you know it, you can you can just be a tad bit more aggressive. You don't have to sit on P1 waiting for it to come up. You play that aggressive role, and then you take two steps back, you grab the camo, and you just keep the aggression forward. But this, uh, I think it was an 8-1 to one lead for this blue team, has been cut down to 13-11 to 11 as proximity and exit is starting to heat up in this game, too. 
That's true. I, it looks like Exodus has the combo in his back pocket, so they have control of that. I haven't really seen any teams use the uh, the tack mag bottom mid. You pair that with the camo, and then he's super sneaky. You really just can't, he won't show up, and like hard to hear him. Yeah, hard to you hear. You get the extra him, yeah. scope. There's no radar to worry about, so it doesn't really matter, but definitely, you know, harder to hear and pinpoint. It's also just so annoying when you're getting pinpointed from car two to like P2 with a player that has camo and the uh, camo. Like, how is he hitting me so well? <laughs> it's almost. Uh... Okay, so we saw a big swing of slays here that will only have Beastish alive, and he's opting to go straight to top center. Extremely aggressive. Everyone's dead. I'm going top middle. Well, what it allows him to do, right? He just checked the blue base. He saw that they didn't spawn there. He immediately turns around. He sees both players. He he gets the information fast, but he does put himself in that very vulnerable spot. And his teammate wasn't quite in a position to help him. So that's going to allow exactly. proximity and Exodus to get that first pick. And now they're starting to play that aggressive role. And like, I think you just have to make sure when you have this uh, four to five kill lead, every death that you have has to be traded out. That's a very good point. Yeah, you don't really have any leeway left to, to make a late game, game comeback without those trades. Reversal. Oh. And this with this camo's popping here in about 10 seconds. Beastish is top center, so I'm, I'm wondering if he's able to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if he's able to maybe. I was hoping they maybe grab that combo and then get out of top mid and get to a you know perimeter to help for the camo, which he did. Camo has dropped, and it looks like blue team grabbed it, I believe. I think they grabbed it. I don't think they're going to get much uh, any further with it as both those players from red team opposite sides of the map in the wow. bottom half. They were making sure. They really prioritized the idea of uh, making sure that they were able to burn it. But that being said, uh, you have a six kill deficit with the, with the opposing team only needing four kills. Uh, you got to make something happen now. They got to stall this game out for at least another two minutes to get that next camouflage and really make this work out. Only three kills necessary for his blue team to take the victory i want to go on with proximity he just went and grabbed that noob combo if there's anything on the map to make this comeback happen i think it's going to be the noob combo right you can find that superior exactly. positioning. you can find the pick that you normally wouldn't get and use that uh use that advantage to your to your best of your ability right and i like that he got himself out of top middle he got that and was like all right i'm gonna reset somewhere safe because we don't want to just die top center with that combo Man. without being able to use this game it. is really slowed down laz you see these players they're they're really starting to check their corners and uh it's interesting how this happens at points in games where both the teams just decide at one point i'm gonna stop pushing i'm gonna stop giving we're gonna stop playing trade for trade we're gonna have to find a couple kills back to back and they're just taking power positions they're waiting for some player to play out of position and take advantage of that uh that player they might, yeah, they might even just wait for the camo. They, they should know. Proximity should know there's someone in P2. Now they know there's, some, there's someone in P3. That's, that's the pick. The player going P3, that allows everyone to kind of focus on that player. I think... That's an interesting play. If he was staying inside P2, then, you know, all you know is, okay, there's the lights coming out. But if he goes P3, it's like, okay, we can light him up, right? So anyone can see him. That was an interesting play yeah, from Proximity just to fly across the map, isolate the player out red. And they did a wonderful job at staying alive in the top red base. They were able to find two for one right there. And then Exodus wins his fight. Camouflage, I believe, going to be coming up in about 10 seconds here. They're going to play that P-side now. And Manny, he needs to establish control on the opposite P-side. That nade's going to give away that there's players waiting for him on the P-side. But he finds beautiful shots. And now they have both the players in trouble. Camouflage, did, did X, Proximity has the camouflage in hand. And this player at bottom is in trouble, but he does find that trade. That was such a critical trade. If Proximity is able to stay alive, keep that two kill buffer, have the camouflage, I think I think we see a victory for Exodus and Proximity, but the road just got much harder. They can afford no deaths. They have to play together. There is no trading out at this point. You have to play perfect Halo for these next three kills. Proximity oh was goodness. able to find that kill on Yaddy T. Beastish is in the middle position. He almost stuck the player going up to the attic. Man, he has He's a... being collapsed now, though. He needs to get out of there. Oh. Now it's tied. It's the closest game we have oh, seen. Oh, my lord, dude. We're... Now, if, if they took this timing right now to collapse instead of staying, you know, I, I get it. It's very, very close. But we've talked about it in the past. When you have that slay, it doesn't matter if it's one kill left or the game just started. That is the moment to kind of be aggressive because it, it's a 2v1. But now it's reset. We lost that timing, and it's back to a 2v2. Right, Even though forced. red team does have better... Right, right. They could have forced that, but, you know, they still have advantage over the map. We know that they're, you know, blue team is trapped inside red base, so it's still doable. 
and now it's it's a clear two v two now instead of it being a two v one. So well, proximity really good angles to pick someone. Yeah, proximity went to that car bubble to draw these players out car door. Now Manny's trying to find that other angle. He saw oh one my goodness! What is this player doing? They're playing so aggressive. Beastish eventually backs down, but proximity's able to come over top and find the kill. Now what an aggressive play from Beastish right there. I, I why don't you why don't you break I, down that last that last five seconds for us last what it, what was the mistake what was the clutch moment it could have really worked either way i think if beast was going to push him he didn't need to take that angle if he, if he goes straight into the bubble because you have to anticipate the other players probably pink or top middle and that pink player proximity's teammate did such a good job by collapsing because otherwise prox was going to die in that bubble having two guys push him like that if his teammate didn't go into car two and you know how we saw him get the cleanup, that was perfect. It could have gone either way, but maybe Beastish's angle, if he's gonna push, it needs to be like boost sliding into where the plasma grenade is. That way you don't have a shot from top middle like hitting you very quickly. That's the only way you're gonna do that. Or they don't push that at all and they look top middle and, and isolate the top mid fight would have been way easier, I think, killing him. And, and once you basically like, okay, our guy's blue bubble, let's leave him there. Let's nade him and let's isolate the other player who's probably like in the center position. Might have right. been I think possible. That, I think that might have been the play, right? Just, you know, there's a player in car bubble. That car bubble is such a, it's a position that's very, it's great at staying alive, right? You have a lot of, uh, a lot of ability to challenge and de-challenge, but it also isolates you out from your gunfights. It's really hard to get back into car two or to, or to push into a base. You can just chuck nades, find a way to reposition right. yourself, find the player that's isolated out over at top mid where the car bubble player can't really help because there's nades raining down. That being said, it was a tough position for Beastish and Yaddy, right? They were the players that were on spawn they got trapped in the base where uh beastish and Pro i mean uh proximity and exodus really could just play their positions try to find the best available uh the best available angle to find those kills and they did just that i mean that that was an incredible play man I, my hands were going my hands were going crazy during that uh during that last section but that being said uh we're gonna take a short break guys we have a video from paradise halo to show you guys while we do take our quick break and get ready for round three uh really guys we we appreciate what paradise halo has done and what console gaming league is doing for uh for the halo 5 scene right now just having these tournaments we really do appreciate it with that being said we'll be right back with some more action relatively soon hello guys and welcome back we have some more action for you guys hopefully we didn't take too long on that break we apologize you know we got to get some stuff set up but that being said we have uh proximity and crew gonna be joining us once again laz uh, i think they're gonna be going up against brainstorm and jk uh how do you say jk7 i'm not sure how he uh how he takes that last half of his name but uh all four of these players very impressive what can you tell us about these four players laz um i don't know too much about jk but i know a lot of players recently have been saying like he's super good like batchford i think tweeted out that he's he vouched for him recently and was like this guy is gonna be a huge talent in the future um but yeah obviously uh brainstorm brainstorm competed uh i can't remember the top of my head like his placings but i know he, he competed a lot in halo 5 if it's the same same brainstorm that i remember i mean um so yeah it's gonna be a sweaty match a lot of really you know four solid players here I'm excited to get into it and see, you know, who's going to come out on top and who's going to control the weapons and absolutely how the plays are going to go down. Absolutely. Our best of three for this round going to be Plaza, uh, Regret, and then Rig if it is needed. Uh, this will be the first time that we're going to see Regret on stream. Uh, I believe uh, we only had two O's from from uh, the earlier rounds, so we will get to see some Regret gameplay. That'll be a little bit different. Plaza, always just a solid 2v2 map. And then we saw a, a great game of Rig earlier in the rounds and I, I think this game is just going to be as close as the previous game uh was these players are just so close in skill uh skill level and i think uh, we'll see a lot of aggressive plays we'll see a lot of a uh, high level cerebral uh halo in this 2v2 but that being said are, 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 are we ready Ooh, words they're hard sometimes Les. are we ready on the uh, on the plaza slayer uh yeah yeah let's let's, let's get it started man I'm here excited. we go let's get it going starting on up man guys once again uh you know during the break we show these videos we we're very appreciative of, of what paradise halo has uh has done they've been giving us videos to, to play during the intermissions they're absolutely wonderful if you guys haven't go follow them on youtube and guys if, you, if you're watching this stream and you, and you don't have the follow button clicked 
what are you doing follow cgl we, we love what they're doing for us halo is uh halo's on a resurgence right now halo 5 specifically and uh we love that they're back here with us and doing some more work in this team we absolutely are very much appreciative but that being said plaza slayer yerp versus i want to say bros i don't know <laughs> very <laughs> weird spelling who do we start off yeah, with i think i'm gonna i want to start off with proximity man he he was the one that was using that sniper rifle in the previous game i want to see if he's gonna be the one to use in this one he's able he to get that overshoot oh yeah he yanked i know we we're both holding our breath for the, <laughs> yeah, the possible ninja that that should not happen that's funny though yeah, i think you picked a good start because <laughs> Proximity's got all the weapons, basically. He's got the sniper and the OS. Yeah. And he is he is just diving around the map. Looks like they're ready for the bottom nest spawn trap. I'm not sure if they have a player. Okay, loop is also open, but they both spawn nest. Right, I think I think Proximity expected the loop spawn, and I think he's gonna be surprised when he finds this player in U-turn. But that player is one shot, so easy enough to take down. A great start for Proximity and Exodus Snipe Rifle still in the hands of Proximity. I think he has all eight bullets left. He hasn't even had to use one yet, and they still have the four to Oli. But having said, Brainstorm finds that kill, and now Proximity might be in a little bit of a trouble. I like how he just immediately gets that driveway. He doesn't want to be seen. They do spot him out at the last second, but he's gonna be able great. to get away with his life. That's great. He needs to, you really needed to get out of dodge there, and this was a great way to do that. So they're able to hopefully just get this pick and fly forward and not get collapsed on from behind, and they're going to be looking pretty good. And I feel like these players are just constantly under threat. They know that they're they're going to be getting chased down if they are made weak. But so far, they just it really has come down to that. They've won, uh, they've won basically every engagement they've been a part of. Every 50-50 fight has gone in their uh, direction thus far. And proximity, he still has five sniper rifle bullets to work, right? He hasn't hit any of them yet. But because he's been in positions where he doesn't really have to use it yet, he's going to be able to have it for later on in the game. And then he hits that player top goal, going to back him down. And this reticle placement from proximity is great. He knew that the only way he could get challenged were from that driveway. He put his reticle in the spot to where that player in market did challenge him. He would die. Uh, but great recognition from JK. He stays alive, finds one, and then finds the other. Finds those two kills. Has two sniper rifle Wondering bullets to can... work with. Exactly. I was ho Hopefully we can get on with JK. This is great. I want to see his gameplay now. He's got the sniper in hand, and we know that the custom is about to drop top center. So I'm wondering this positioning here. We're trying to get maybe a pick off of one of the players, but... I think the overshoot. Oh, it looks like they're still going to be able to grab it because the player was bottom center the whole time. Maybe if they would have done that van jump up, they could have had the overshield as JK was kind of out of position with the sniper for a little bit there. And he grabbed both. That's great. Right, and then uh, I think Proximity able to burn him off at just the last second. We've seen him really make a make an effort to go find those new combos. He does that. Maybe that's why he wasn't too uh, too concerned with getting up as fast as he could have but uh that being said there is a jump that you can do from that bottom mid position that he was in you guys have watched a little bit of shyways videos where you know you can jump on that little ledge do a spring jump get onto that overshield uh but that's just definitely some high technical stuff i think maybe 0.01 of the one yeah. percent uh, i was population. just hoping for a regular for a van jump up to be honest just to get the os when i saw jake could take that route but uh that's interesting he got he got away with both and he's still alive yeah, I feel like JK just... Uh, I looked away, I'm not sure if he uh, died yet. No, he hasn't died, and he's just been just staying alive, right? We were talking about how all the 50-50 fights went to Proximity and Exodus early on in the game. Now it seems as if they're all going to JK. This man has been doing a wonderful job at staying alive, repositioning himself, and finding incredible sniper shots, town shots. It's Exodus over in that glass, and all of a sudden, if you are on Exodus and Proximity, all that oh, momentum you goodness. had from the beginning no. of the game is gone. Oh, my... <sighs> He's oh. just destroying. That's some. See, they had a, <clears throat> they had an opportunity right there to set up a, a blue spawn trap, but JK's teammate left blue as JK went to to loop. They have a chance to do it again here if they kill this loop player. Honestly, I'm not. Goes to blue. Blast, I'm not sure if that wasn't intentional because we saw JK immediately get on that light post and then he jumped out and hovered forward and has his had his reticle placed right on that spawner. I don't know if that's a new trap that I'm not personally aware of that maybe that's been discovered with how Money Two's been playing recently. But that hotel spawn trap with the immediate snipe on that player what what proved effective that right there, was man. That amazing. was amazing. Yeah, that was a great shot. But still, I was, if that guy stays hotel, you know they're both going to be nest, and then that's the easy peasy. And that's only one player that they sniped. It doesn't account for the other player who mm -hmm. was able to weasel out. Even still, though, they are just running through red team right now, and they're already ready again, top middle. 
this has been really impressive yeah we see them traverse the map with ease right it's constantly rotating to find different spots you know that and with twos there you have it's easy to predict spawns right but you have less influence on the map when you're playing a traditional force you can really be sure of the spawn trap in twos there's always the opportunity that they could maybe spawn not where you quite expected them to spawn so they have to check those spots but jk is just on something different right now the man just stuck the player in flower window immediately challenged out the player in gold he's been traversing the map like a madman he is constantly looking at everything and they just force another split spot i don't think i've seen that split spawn in quite a bit where they had the player in loop they had a player in blue one split in uh in yard and the other one split in nest and all of a sudden they're doing a wonderful job of isolating out these fights they have doubled the score as well i, mean, I don't think we've seen i think I mean, jk running right <laughs> he's on a this running right oh my great god great gameplay here you couldn't ask for anything better than this right now just you know, tee it up man who who is jk because i mean everyone knows that he's this incredible player but he is doing something different in this round three he is absolutely moving across the map he's acting as if this is a plate of butter and he is just slicing through it and he's finding players and man i don't know what sensitivity he's playing on but it's it's a little jiggle it's never stable man i feel like i'm getting motion sickness from watching this man roll across this map but it was eight to two or i think it was somewhere around there and all of a sudden we're at 24 11 <laughs> one last kill to get jk i think he wanted to go for the stunt snipe right there unfortunately not quite able to swing his reticle 360 degrees but this has just been an absolute show by jk and brainstorm and he just hits the snipe oh to goodness. end the game let's go <laughs> oh my i i just that might be the most impressive performance we'll see all day from jk right there that was uh, that was something different that was a running right he was he had went 15 kills in a row in that game one uh I, i'm wow. speechless man i'm absolutely yeah, speechless good stuff there you go <laughs> that's a, incredible oh my so we definitely need to see red team pull the sniper mm -hmm. in the future but i actually don't know if the, uh which map i what's coming oh, up yeah, next let actually me, let's in, go in the series check here to that see out if he's even gonna be a sniper regret yeah. there is not and so don't rig so they need it. to no worries about that and regret <laughs> they can bring this right back and then game three we need to see red team controlling a sniper if you want red team to win because we know if blue team gets it uh, it's a wrap with jk if, if he grabs that sniper apparently yeah that, um yeah uh regret though another map where the spawns are fairly predictable right you're you're going to be able to just stand on one side of the top mid and and really that'll put enough influence on the left or the right to to spawn trap them in the other base so i think we'll see uh, i think we'll see another iteration of jk zooming across the map like he was in that game one but that being said i mean exodus and and proximity this is uh i think if there's a map that's going to be skewed in their favor i think this is the map right you don't have to worry about a sniper rifle. both of them impressive the sniper rifle player uh, sniper players uh to start with but there is that noob combo we've seen proximity once again he's constantly prioritizing that noob combo so i expect to see him with it and they can keep the power up times ready uh i think we'll see we'll see them be able to really keep the game close so when it comes down we've seen them clutch it out at the end right when the game comes down to the wire it's 24 24 they're the team that comes out on top i think we've seen them play with that clutch performance but you just cannot let jk get in his groove right jk the second you give him an inch he'll take it another mile he's absolutely an incredible player but i, I can't wait any longer uh Laz. i think we have to start up this game too let's go so i think it's safe to say you probably want to hop on board with jk off the start <laughs> see how this goes maybe he's a slow starter i mean we saw we saw prox and, and exodus really start off strong but maybe it takes him a little bit to get his uh to get his engine revving but uh that being said we'll see, I, we'll see how he does without the snake man. i definitely want to see brainstorm as well get him on there i'm excited man. yeah i mean we didn't even get to see a lot from brainstorm because we were on with jk mm -hmm. and the man just never died so <laughs> there was... and there's a lot to be said right we know that it's a team game and so obviously you know jk needed a lot of support in these situations and, and it was always there apparently because the plays were being made as a team so we're gonna see right here which team's gonna come out on top who's gonna control the os and the camp or the uh the combo i think jk he's uh, so both these teams opting for the slow play you know sometimes you see these plays yo you see how low he got on that ground I, if he would have gotten a look to stay alive <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen a player uh play that low on that overshield before that's something that uh I, you don't see implemented that much but uh jk not quite able to live and that's gonna allow proximity and access to take a quick lead 
as uh, we see Exodus prioritize that noob combo on the top. This is what we're talking about, right? Prioritize the noob combo. Use right. that to, to have your advantage in your fight. Manny looking for players in blue two is going to hit him with a nice nade but proximity is going to be outnumbered over on that p street exodus able to at least get the trade out on jk and that's what you need to uh, strive for right if your teammate goes down make sure you get the trade keep this game close you cannot let it get out of hand i think that applies to both these teams I want to make sure. Are you? Uh, I want to make sure that we're still here. Laz, you still have your uh, your mic. Sorry. Yes. 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 I had to mute my microphone for a uh, second there. Gotcha. back. All good. So the, no one's grabbed this caster either. Looks like it's gonna be fighting around it. Looks like we lost a combo right now. So I'm looking for blue team to grab that combo off of that body and actually use, it, especially because the OS is not gonna be up yet. But I just want to control it for the next cycle of it when it pops in about a minute here. Less than a minute. Right, we see Brainstorm immediately pushing the pressure into red base. And I think they knew Exodus was was by himself in that base. Unfortunately, they weren't quite able to get there in time to, to get that kill, but they do a wonderful job making sure the trade does come out, right? I think that's what we've seen from both these teams. They When one player dies, right. they immediately find the trade. They don't let the other team get too comfortable. And we're about 20 seconds away from this next overshield. We, have, we know that JK was the one that burned it. Both these teams should have the time. I guess we'll see which team uh, opts to prioritize it. And once again, you know, what, what do you think about that? Uh, them not going for that plasma caster? Is that something you'd like to see these teams use more often? I think it can be so it's so easy to abuse if you're good with it. I personally am horrible with it. So don't ever, you know, I'm bad with it. But yeah, if you're good with it, you can abuse it. It gives you angles, right? It gives you a lot of angles, a bunch of grenades, a lot of damage. And you have the option to hold it and, and do, you know, the, the explosive with it as well. Um, but yeah, it's really it comes down to the user, I guess. Otherwise, it's gonna be just a waste of time. Obviously, if you're not good with it, it's just mm -hmm. don't bother picking it up. They had the combo as well um, at that moment. But yeah, no one's grabbing it right now, and, and it's just kind of focusing on good old two v two, you know, out shooting each other, trying to move her and, and control the OS every two minutes. That's all it's been so far. And red team is controlling top mid the entire time, so maybe they can pull away here, knowing with you know the red spawns coming up. Mm -hmm. And now Exodus, he's been really just patrolling the peace side. He has that noob combo that he hasn't even shot off yet just because they've always had the advantage in the fights thus far. He really hasn't needed it. And so far, they are just winning their one-on-ones and they're starting to get a little bit of a lead. And that's what they need, right? You get that lead. You can afford right. yourself a couple mistakes because you know that uh, JK, they're, they're eventually going to heat up. They're eventually going to have their little spree. You got to build yourself a lead. Just maintain that as much as possible. But Exodus misses the noob combo but hits the five shots it's only a four kill game here so want to hop on board here have we been on with uh with brainstorm Let's see what he's gonna do here to help the team come back look like he's trying to push out towards p street and he knows he's being pushed from behind so he needs to somehow just live on fortunately goes down yeah, I think that's something. And now JK has got top mid control, so I don't, you know, we'll see if he can survive. That's kind of a difficult place to, to live. <laughs> they, they're just hunting him down. And I, I mean, you, you, he said it's a difficult place to survive. He did just that. Uh, I think uh, it wow. was uh, Exodus that went to push him over that top mid position. And uh, he was able to take him down. And then he finds proximity on the slide jump. Now, one thing to note. Uh, proximity and Exodus, when we saw the overshield get uh, grabbed, he waited on that overshield for about eight seconds. That was so he knew the time. Unfortunately for them, uh, Brainstorm, they were able to have full control of the bottom half of the map. So they, that, uh, right. that timing issue that they had with the overshield just uh, didn't matter. Hop on. There we go. He's got the overshield. So has a little bit left. He's going to try to survive. His teammate just went down. So he needs to really just try to isolate a fight or just delay until he's got help again. He's looking. Yeah, that overshoulder. You, you know, when you jump around the corner, you see two players right in front of you. You don't. Yeah, you don't know if you're gonna be able to get both, so you just put the shots in both and, uh, yeah. and just back down. Just get as much damage as possible. Wait for your teammates to come in. They do get the trade, but I mean, we've seen even though J.K. and uh, and Brainstorm really just had the advantage for about the last, I'd say, minute and a half. It really hasn't uh, affected the score that much. Still a five kill lead for Exodus and Proximity. And I think they can't really let that get much farther. Uh, they can't let them get much further ahead, right? You have to keep it within that five, six, 
kill range especially when we're coming down to that 20 kill mark uh this maybe this game's gonna slow down a little bit maybe these teams play a little bit slower to make sure they get that next overshield and use that overshield to propel them forward and and play themselves as we see both these teams starting to take a little bit of a slower approach towards the second half of this game last right it definitely needs to start happening now like you said it can't pull away much more and blue team does have the combo that's basically like you know the only the only weapon that's being used to get an advantage right now so it's like if they keep controlling that they'll at least have a fighting chance if they don't grab the os they can play for a burn maybe if they're not able to completely secure it they have that option having the combo to just play for the burn and then you know if, if they don't have numbers advantage to grab it straight up mm, nope. better than them dying for it and giving up the combo so we saw Brainstorm in that position of P2. He got back down, and now all of a sudden Exodus pushes out that P door. I don't think he was expecting that push at all as a team shot does come in, but overshield in the hands of JK while all that was happening. Noob combo in the hands of Exodus. He's going to be hunting uh -oh. down JK with that overshield. He hits him, and they find that kill, and I think that's probably going to do it. I think it's going to be too far from this point as they've done just a wonderful job at finding these trades throughout the second half of this game. Every single time it was a 50-50 fight, they made sure that they at least took a teammate uh took the opposing team with them and that's why they've really been able to maintain the maintain the lead that they that they earned in the beginning half of this game right lots of trades in that in their favor so they just need one more kill here they're gonna be able to collapse maybe if they find him brainstorm is not letting down though he's just being aggressive he's gonna make them <laughs> i guess work for it you know he's got both of them there let's see this is very aggressive collapse they might actually be able to uh, to fight back if they, if they take Exodus out here. They're going to have a combo oh. back. Oh, that's what you didn't want, though. The trade it did not need to, it needed to be a clean slay. Yeah, I mean, that's what they did so well throughout that entire game, right? It was always trade after trade between uh, between the those two players. Uh, 11 assists for proximity right there. Absolutely incredible. You could tell that they, they communicated well. They made sure that no kills were left behind. And although he was out there dying, I think every time he died, that kill was traded out when it was with proximity. I think that's why they took that first. Uh, that game, man, it was absolutely great job by those guys. Lots of trades. Holy moly, that was great. <sighs> so now, now we're back at Red it now. So three, we, we know, we know, the first map, we know how that went. It went to blue team's favor. They had sniper control and dominated. And then the second game right here, there was no snipers, just just pistols, a caster that was never used, and you know the combo in the OS, and that went over to, to red team. So we're gonna see game three, what, what's gonna go down here. There is a sniper on rig there you know there's a customer to worry about that camo yeah i mean be oof, interesting. because rig rig is so similar to plaza it has those little intricate uh differences that make it i think plaza just plays a little bit better in money twos than rig but i think rig still has a lot of the same principles it has that sniper rifle it has a camouflage that's going to be used it has clear sight lines to spawn i say even more clear sight lines right i think that's why players prefer plaza is that you can just be in tower with a sniper and shoot a player off uh, spawn and back bunker or you can be at that yellow corner and shoot a player off spawn at carbine uh so i think same thing uh, applies to this uh to uh proximity and excess from game one you cannot let jk get that sniper rifle and get comfortable get them uh, they can't they can't let themselves get in cycles make sure that you are trading out each kill that way the team can't set up and find their ideal spawn trap and just put you in a spawn trap for two three deaths at a time and really build out their lead that being said Laza, first game three we have on stream uh, all between four just vastly impressive players uh, i want to see i want to see what's going to be happening hoping for a, a close match what are your predictions on this one Oh. This is the, the first game three we've had. 25-24 all day, baby. We don't predict anything else, man. It's, it's got to be 25 20. I'm not even going to predict and, and the winner. Favor? I'm not going to predict the winner. All I know is it's going to be a, a 180 snapshot uh, while in the air, why wide uh, to, to win the game, man. It's just that's how it's going to go. <laughs> player is going to jump off uh, jump off tower and just why wide the player over hat back bunker but uh let's see uh okay <laughs> let's get this game started on rig slayer man I'm, I'm excited man it's it's absolutely incredible let's see you know if that prediction uh, becomes uh real I, I'd, I'd end my career man that's you can't go any higher than that 
you know he's gonna we, we be didn't predict a, a winner though I, you know? I, I wonder okay okay i'm gonna i'm gonna say ex- i'm gonna play devil's advocate though and just give it yeah that was gonna give oh, it to yeah, exodus okay, and yeah. proximity and say they're gonna grab that sniper and, and make sure blue team does not grab it maybe we'll see some plays off the map with it even if need be i just i just like their clutch factor man we saw them clutch up at what was it a 24 22 or maybe it was 24 or 21 that they were down they came back they clutched it up they won that game I think when it comes down to the nitty gritty, if they keep this game close and they get towards that end, I think Exodus makes something happen with that sniper rifle, or he may, or he allows uh, he allows some situation to happen that that lets them win this game. That being said, don't let JK and don't let Brainstorm get too much of an advantage. But Proximity does oh a wonderful goodness. job. That, that's some great reticle placement from Proximity right there to to make sure that he had his reticle place in a position to take down that camo player as soon as he went around that corner. Right, and Brainstorm got there really quickly with a lot of timing. He actually did the spring jump from the uh, like the the toolbox up into to cut timing into the, the small cat outside and got the flank on the E2 guys and just grabbed like, the camo super fast. But yeah, you're right. All the radical placement, everything, and they didn't have a slay either, and they just took him out really quickly. But at least they got the timing and the burn on it. That's a smart from proximity, right? He knows that they can't Wasting let that sniper ammo. rifle go into the enemy hands and have them too many opportunities. That's like if you have an eight bullet sniper rifle they give you up, that's a, that's eight uh that's eight opportunities for the enemy team to kill you. So make sure if you if you feel any pressure of that sniper rifle, you want to give them as uh as little ammo as possible. But proximity does a great job of staying alive. And this is I think two games where we've seen them really take advantage in the beginning. And uh now it's just a matter of if they can maintain that hold as they are just fine finding positions they're trying to take down jk but jk gonna win that fight on proximity exodus is in position to find the trade and now we see brainstorm he's stutter stepping in that hallway he wanted to make sure that that player couldn't hear him he heard him drop down for that sniper rifle he's gonna land down the easy shots find that kill but the sniper rifle is out of ammo at this point now it's gonna come down to pure pistol skill as the next camouflage is gonna be coming up in about 30 ish seconds so it's just gonna be pistol on pistol for the next little bit Right, and Proximity was just p- playing it very patiently and waiting, but unfortunately they collapsed on him. He was just waiting in the E2 there, knowing he couldn't really pop out without being too certain that they were going to see him. Maybe he'll... Maybe he can control tower here, but he's going on the low flank on the zigzag here versus the E2 player, Brainstorm. This is where tower control might be really useful here if one of these players can go on tower and you can at least bait the camo, you know, knowing that players are going to be kind of, you know, sitting around it, maybe in the E2, maybe in the drill plot area. So the slays are coming in for blue team. Mm-hmm. And they and they just got the scatter shot. I, did we see JK got the camel? I actually want to hop on with him. Uh, we're awesome. And we're yeah. I mean, you see him already pushed up in this engine too. He waits for his teammate to get down some easy shots so he can come in, find the collapse on proximity. Now he has to get away from Exodus, and he does a just that. Look at that route to get out. Right, he jumped precisely, put himself over in that corner of sewer so he can stay alive, and then he's able to reposition himself to find shots on Exodus as he's trying to escape. Man, the pressure is just so real when you play against players like J.K. and and Brainstorm. They are absolutely going to make sure that if you're getting away, that you're taking as much damage and that you're going to feel as much pressure as possible when you do so they really are blue team really is doing a good job and you see them like you mentioned earlier brainstorm stutter stepping just doing every little minute thing that you can to get an advantage in every situation you're in whether you're in a 2v1 or a 1v1 just every tiny thing and then you know the spring jump in the beginning to get some timing just to burn the camo blue team but with all of that red team is still pulling away it looks like exodus has sniper effort right now and we're gonna see if we can Oh. Predict this bunker spawn. There's the first one. Awesome. <laughs> and there's the second. Oh, oh my goodness. <sighs> go right back to bunker. They're going to spawn bunker again. He should maybe can be ready for that. Looks like blue team is playing really patiently and they're not popping out. They're actually baiting this. Oh, but they're still going to get picked up. Oh my lord. <laughs> Exodus is heating oh up in the second half though. He did waste three sniper rifle bullets when he first got that sniper rifle He immediately just put three into the ground and now I think he's in a position where he's like man I wish I had a little bit more. I'm kind of blaming with this thing right <laughs> now I wish I had a couple more bullets to work with But uh, that being said they were plays. down by quite a bit all of a sudden they have this lead and they have full control of the map Next camouflage is probably gonna play the biggest impact I actually want to move over to proximity He's in the position to play for that camouflage and he has a scatter shot uh, to work with Right, there it is, that's the pick, and they had the, the player in tower watching the E1 possible flank. Great movement by Exodus to watch that E2 flank as the camo is being grabbed by proximity. This is awesome baiting and switching. 
And I mean, they're playing with each other so well. And I think we saw that in game two. I think that's why they really took that victory. You could just tell that their communication was so precise that they're always ready to help each other, that they were very much, you could tell the small talk was just rampant. You could just tell that they were always positioning themselves to really help each other. And now Proximity, unfortunately, gonna get taken down from Brainstorm. I think he just missed that one pistol shot that he thought hit. And now uh, Exodus is in danger as Brainstorm's trying to find him in engine two. Exodus able to stay alive once again. I like this D challenge from Brainstorm. He knew that that player probably spawned in a position to help. He knew that he couldn't really chase and keep his life. He's gonna instead opt to find a reposition. And uh, I think that's the correct play as Exodus is now making his way over into the engine. They're gonna have a two on one in engine two and JK is gonna lose that Brainstorm. Now he repositioned himself all the way to Carbine and it didn't seem as if JK uh, took the took a complimentary position right he pushed into that engine too i would have maybe liked to see jk try to draw those players out towards that carbine so that brainstorm could have had some easy shots over in that open area fortunately that doesn't happen and all of a sudden this uh this lead that we saw for bros has just absolutely dissipated and now it's a five kill lead that's opened on up for proximity and exodus and they're they're doing a wonderful job at maintaining that as they find another trade and exodus was able to stay alive and all of a sudden jk having to find a different angle he does that and finds that kill on proximity but th that's just too you cannot afford these trades at these points uh, at this point you have right. to find two kills in a row and start putting them on a cycle right and something i noticed during this whole cycle right now this entire fight situation red team had control of tower they're the only ones that were really using tower while blue team was kind of side by side pushing the e1 pushing the e2 together um and we're seeing red team pull away right as the camo is dropping the sniper's been up for a little bit so i'm wondering if that tower play is going to come into play later on now, late game, as everything's everything's dropping, you see Proximity's got the camo. Is he going to die with it? Looks like he's living. This is huge for Red Team here. That's absolutely massive. Now they can make a play for this for this sniper. Yeah, this is awesome. One thing to point out, and the sniper was played off the map. I no, I don't think I don't think it actually got played. I think it's down in that open field. Oh in no, I right now. Yeah, I no, I think it was played. It. it was played. I think you're right. One thing to point out, though, I think yeah. Exodus survived for about a solid four minutes right there because he picked up that scatter shot from the player that died over uh over at the white corner he had the old snipe rifle from the previous spawn when he did that and then played for about another minute on top of that oh this is proximity playing a dangerous game i think he was about to drop and he saw the scatter shots orange little tips he's like nope uh, <laughs> just it's like never mind i want to win this cleanly i don't want to jeopardize my camouflage here and uh you know I, I, it's 21 to 13. Something is just clicking with proximity and Exodus. But that being said, JK is in a prime position. He finds oh. two of them. And this is where it gets dangerous. This is what we were talking. You can't let JK and Brainstorm do this. You see JK just influencing that back carbine spawn. I think he thought they spawned in bunker. They're looking at bunker, but they got that yellow corner spawn. And all of a sudden, JK might be in danger of a player just walking up behind him. I think he's checking the yellow corner now. They have no idea where these two players are. They do eventually find him out but nades are being thrown jk doing his best to stay alive he's in a he's in a position that's dangerous proximity throws a nade and gets him only three kills necessary for them to win now brainstorm nade. has to run away and i think he's going to be able to do so. oh my god what a reach out if, if uh, i'm wondering if if jk because jk put the scatter shot on respawn and it, it should already be back up now i'm wondering if you know that's coming into play right now a little bit too late now that we went this way it's going to be ma mainly a you know a camo focus it really has to be a camo focus but that scatter shot is up for the grab you know for the taking by e either team that wants to go grab it so maybe blue team could you know make a play for that but it looks like the camel's gonna go in the hands of red team and they just need one more kill and they, they can for sure anticipate the bunker split you see proximity trying to get himself up in that little spot so you can just drop on a, a player cranny. and all of a sudden this player in engine one has to do his best to stay alive and brainstorm's eventually going to be found out Ooh. absolutely incredible comeback from uh, proximity and exodus to win that game three it, it did not look pretty in that game one right we saw jk and brainstorm it really just not. take advantage and that was absolutely beautiful beautiful twos from exodus and proximity in game two and three to really uh, secure that victory and move themselves on to round four that was an exciting match to watch yeah I'm so... So that was great the first game three you see and, and it really didn't know who was in... oh my uh, but you know our predictions were well i, I guess pro proximity and then we're going to bring it back in the benefit of the doubt and i wasn't sure how i was going to play at first actually like you said 
but uh, they made some really good plays. Oh my god! Man. Definitely, like I said, the, the tower play. I believe, in my in my opinion, the tower play was a big difference that I was noticing as far as the uh, the twos there in that last game of rig was the only main uh, difference was blue team never really used it and they decided to stick you know two and two together more. Where red team were they were using it and that allowed them to have a guy on the white hall and the other in the white corner while top tower and then it was easy for them to watch any flanks from like maybe E2 or something you can get and then you can collapse from tower right you can just leave tower mm -hmm. and push you know E2 or white corner it doesn't matter you can even get the camo from there really quickly um, that's the only main difference that I noticed I mean absolutely I think I think that was a massive difference though right and uh I think that's why we're seeing Exodus and Proximity move on. They did a wonderful job at maintaining that tower control and helping each other throughout that tower control. But that being said, guys, uh, we have more action coming. I mean, it's not stopping anytime soon. We'll see how far Proximity and Exodus can make it throughout this bracket. I have a feeling we're going to see them a little bit later on. That being said, we uh, we are going to take a short break, get our round four ready. Guys, We uh, Console Gaming League has been absolutely uh, a blast to work with. We love their tournaments. We love what they're doing for the scene exclamation mark discord go join their discord follow the twitch channel follow them on twitter and do the same thing for paradise halo they came in they increased this prize pool they're, they're they have some things in works for uh for something of this tournament you know maybe we'll see some of these guys in, in a paradise halo video coming soon it'd be absolutely amazing to see that beautiful work from uh from you and sean on that front laz i mean so we'll be right back enjoy a little filler video and we'll be back at uh we'll be back soon welcome back everyone we have our our lower half semifinals so we will be streaming both semifinals but we have the lower half first and uh laz i i just saw the players that are in this lobby and um this could be a grand finals matchup anywhere else but uh it's our semifinals here today. We have Bound and Neptune, the legends, the Money Two legends, going up against Guitar Hero Dude and Gold Star BR. And both those guys, an absolute unit of a duo. They they play together all the time. They have incredible shots, and, and they're I'd put them right at the top uh, with everyone else. Right. But uh, this is this is going to be an exciting one, Laz. Why don't you tell everyone about our best of three rotation and uh, and what you expect to see in this game? Well, we got Truth off the rip for the first game, and we know, you know, Bound is very fluid on, on really all of these maps. And so he's going to be moving around the map quickly. They're going to play really aggressively. And I'm, I'm just looking to see, you know, Goldstar BR, and I, both of these guys in a red team, they've won tournaments together, right? These guys, yeah. like you said, they play together all the time. And so I know they, they understand how the importance of controlling the camo and the importance of controlling, like, the combo top center. And uh, we didn't really see any teams take advantage of the tactical pistol that, that you know just for the extra zoom ability you know bottom center no one really picked that up so i'm wondering if maybe red team will, will kind of pick that up and use it for their advantage in this in this first game uh but i definitely expect to see bound and neptune they're gonna be flying together they're gonna be expanding out and, and catching the players off spawn and putting a lot of pressure as soon as they can um yeah what are you what are you looking for as far as uh plaza and regret <laughs> You said this is the Money yeah, Twos lobby, lobby, right? Lobby, this is... man. There's no excuses. Like, if, if they don't win this game, right, if either of these teams uh, in the semifinals, all four of them, like, the two teams that win in this game, that those are the two teams that deserve to be in the finals. This is the, these are the games that people traditionally play Money Twos on, especially Truth and Plaza. And I think this is the perfect round. Uh, this is the perfect best of three to decide who's going to be in our grand finals. Bound and Neptune, I, I expect to see just most some of the most cerebral Money Two plays that we ever see. Like they, they play Money Twos all the time. I expect to see them working with each other just extremely well, just moving across the map and, and finding the angles necessary to take down players. I expect a, I expect we we've seen an incredible gameplay, right? Where I'm not going to take away from our one round one, round two, and round three. It was incredible. Incredible. But I think we're going to see that next notch of speed in this round four. Maybe maybe round three was a little bit more akin to what we'll see in the semifinals. But I expect this just to be that step faster. We're going to see players instantly recognize the situations that they're in and try to take advantage at all points. What you said about truth, I'm going to be very curious about that. Whether these players take the time to go out of their way to get that tack mag, try to use that to land those cross map shots and just give themselves a tiny bit of advantage that might need that might be needed, uh, especially for like Guitar Hero dude and gold star br gold star br is going to be absolutely 
absolutely filthy if he gets attack mag in his hand. He has one of the deadliest shots in the game. Yeah. And I, I'd be very excited to see what he can do, how he's going to make this map work for him in this uh, in this first game. But that being said, I, are we ready to go, last in this first game? Uh, we'll be in about 10 seconds. Uh, stop slacking here and get this game up. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we'll get it already for you guys. That being said, man, it's this is this is where we start to see the best of the best. This is the cream of the crop that's going to be coming in for our uh, for our final couple games. That being said, it, it's been an absolute wonder. This tournament has ran so smoothly, and I I, I love working with you guys, man. I, you guys don't hear him. He you uh, you don't see him, but we have salt and pepper. Or is that how it goes? Salt, Sultan X Pepper or Sultan, however you want to go. Yeah, Salt and Pepper, probably the best producer I've ever worked with, man. It, you you are a, a tier above, man. You're, you're absolutely incredible at what you do. I I appreciate you being here with us. And uh, CGL, just uh, Premier League guys. If you if you haven't followed them on Twitter, go follow them on Twitter. Go join their Discord. Get involved. If you play Overwatch on Xbox or PlayStation or or whatever it is, go go join. They, they, I think they have a, a robust uh, Overwatch scene. If you if you love fighting games, I know they do a ton of Mortal Kombat and, and other fighting games to go with it. Go join. Go see what's going on over there. They they do an absolute wonderful job at their production and and just creating the best experience possible for these players and also big shout out to our sponsor paradise halo i i know uh, i'll let Laz talk about it because i know he works with sean so much and just uh give a little rundown of what paradise halo is and what and why you guys should go follow them on youtube yeah paradise halo came in last minute you know about a week ago and decided they wanted to sponsor the, this tournament and, and they upped the, the prize money uh and 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 i do you believe that we're looking at possibly looking at making some content for you know from this tournament on you know for that channel and the channel is just a big community driven uh project that dinashan uh you know shout out to dinashan he puts in so much work he's got a great beautiful vision that i really want to support and you know it's just like i said community driven um kind of like a passion project to bring in like the casuals and the competitive side and kind of mush it together and, and he's he loves competitive halo so there's a lot of like there's a tactic series that i help with and there's just a lot of videos on there um the history of halo in the past just a lot of good stuff but the matches are ready so, <laughs> so let's get it man we don't want to even like take any much longer but thank you guys so much you know for just everything sponsoring the event and, and djl you guys are awesome bound and never to get it going yeah, let's go let's get it let's get it started let's let's decide who we're gonna watch off the rip Laz. and you know i think i think it was uh we have a mutual friend shyway he uh he released a video called uh who is bound and i think we're about to see who bound yes. is in this game i think we're gonna see <laughs> him uh flying across the map and, and making some things happen and uh i think i think he'll be the player to watch so i want to start off with bound see what he opts to do off the start truth uh the truth what midship uh what, what else has it been called it's, it's a traditional heretic map. heretic it, it's been around it, zealot yeah zealot. It's, it's been in almost every single halo guys it's it's traditional old heads new heads we all love it we'll see uh we'll see what happens man i'm, I'm just That's shaking right. with anticipation man i'm ready to watch this game one Here we go. We're going to start off with Bound. He's going to make his way towards this P Street. He's going to have one player to worry about, but he's going to play just so aggressive. He's going to get up in his face, right? You see him push past that 50 yard line, wow. put himself in that position to where Guitar Hero dude probably never expected him to come from that bottom angle. Immediately gets the five shot on, gets that camouflage, and you can already see Travis is already looking towards that bubble. He knows where that player spawned. And fortunately for Bound, he thought both of them spawned there. Didn't quite happen to work out for him. You got to make sure you can't play too far ahead of yourself right there Laz. right you gotta check your uh, bases make sure that they're not there to be seen and then <laughs> cold star br yeah, it was looking really good right but yeah you're right on there maybe they both did and the other one just ran across but it looked like they got the split in that base and that player did a really good job catching bound as he was sprinting top middle even though he had the camo yeah, I think he had camo. I mean, what a uh, talk about incredible shots to hit, right? That player is flying out, and you have to you have to make sure you kill that player while he's uh, flying because if he gets past you, you know that you're gonna be in trouble. He did a great job with that, but Gold Star BR, I think he has three kills at the moment. He's been shooting some absolute laser beams, keeping his team in this game. 
as we are on with uh, actually can we move over to gold star br he's fighting two players over in his base he's doing his best to stay alive he's just hitting down nades guitar hero dude comes and gets the help from the top but gold star br is just working his way towards this player i think it's a bound that's stuck in this back bubble and he wants to get down as much damage as possible but unfortunately neptune gonna find him out but guitar hero dude gets the immediate trade and bound wins the critical fight oh i think if guitar hero dude just hits the head right there he has the double kill and the momentum for his team unfortunately we're gonna see another reset it's basically zero zero once again camouflage gonna be coming up soon we'll see which team takes advantage right. the blue team was a little bit more aggressive there off the rip and they immediately we see i think that was bound that got up the top middle as soon as he spawned and he had the other player anchoring in the base and so just that extra bit of aggression they were able to get that those slays right now as the camo's dropping but everything is kind of flipping now it looks like bound is down there ready for the camo but he's got to win this fight maybe he'll go for the burn or the trade uh. looks like red team will be able to secure this if they play this right Right, and I think they what can. I would have maybe liked to see Guitar Hero dude stay back a little bit, let a little bit of time run off the clock, and then grab that camouflage, just so you know the exact time and that Bound and Neptune have no idea when it's coming up. Right, just get that little bit of advantage because you're gonna need right, it in right. this fight. We've seen Bound and Neptune play so fast. Every little bit counts, right? They still secured the camo though, so we'll see how how he plays this out. That's a very good point though. Every little bit counts. And Guitar Hero dude finds that, uh, wins that fight on Neptune, but Bound's gonna immediately come and get the trade, and then Bound hits him with the back smack. The movement comes back, he hits that player. I, I don't think we can quite qualify as that as a ninja, but it was just about as close as you can get. Bound doing his best to stay alive, nullifies that advantage that the camo brings, and now they immediately know they're spawning red, and we see Bound and Neptune playing in position. They're just trying to play off each other. They're looking for some type of advantage to go and push these players in the red base, but so far, both these teams doing a wonderful job at landing down those shots but bound eventually finds the kill with that grenade and he's shooting the plasma oh my bound what are you oh up my to plays bound is just going in he's already ready for the blue spawn as well unfortunately he goes down but that was really impressive i was just banking on him throwing a grenade but he took it one step further and used the one that was already there <laughs> Oh, I mean, you gotta plays. love it, man. Play. Just plays. Just plays. Absolute. Guitar Hero dude getting a little ambitious as he challenged two players over at that P Street. He will eventually fall. We're gonna see this next camouflage play at impact in about 20 to 30 seconds as Bound is making his way towards that car set. He's gonna find these players. Now, I'd be interested. You see how Bound immediately moves towards that middle of the map. He doesn't want to have any influence on that car side. He wants to, in fact, he wants to spawn that player. I think it's Gold Star BR who just got spawned at the car street because he wants to make sure that they are spawning as far away from that camo and that they're gonna have to play to them in order to get to that camouflage and neptune is ready for this player at the p door unfortunately that's a great him. point yeah just giving them those spawns away is so crucial unfortunately they still lost one of those players on the perimeter so now it's just a basically an even 1v1 everything's reset to a 2v2 now this is gonna be a tense fight nobody wants to go down first there is a player p3 though and a player think, top middle those I are the two most vulnerable bounds. ones it has that camo at p3 if we can move on to his pov and he already grabbed it oh yeah so i think while they're fighting over in that base oh my God, bound was that... able to grab it I'm like wondering like what is going on here and now bound he just about has a quarter of this camo left now you see him he's constantly jumping he doesn't want to make too much movement because he wants to keep that camo on him at, at all times but he's jumping and propelling himself forward trying to use the geometry of the map to keep his movement fast he does just that he uses all that camo to his ability and now they have a five kill lead that's opened up great job by gold star and guitar hero dude to keep this game close but when they lost that last camo i think it kind of put the nail in they're gonna have to play out of their minds in order to get this game close enough for them to win you see bound man he he sniffed out guitar hero dude he, he saw the advantage just pushed forward trying care. to get those kills man and wow neptune was still able to spawn and help secure a slay while bound lived that is that's really impressive because we saw bound throw and jump in there and it had to back down being a one shot now there's the three more kills there's someone in the center of the map here they're going to be able to find this player Red team really needs to kind of slow it down and win one fight here, get one pick, and, and that's really the only way they're going to come back, but they're still soaring in the center of the oh map. That's what we don't want to see here. Mm -hmm. Once you lose a player and then you're, you're going top center, maybe they're trying to get this game out of the way. Yeah, I mean, they, they basically, I think they chalked it up. They knew it was over, and uh, 
the bound and neptune do what they do best they just take advantage of every opportunity you saw them flying just shooting down some heavy fives over towards the end beautiful job by them as they are going to take your game one 25 to 15 15 and 10 respectively between the two players six assists a piece that being said, I mean, you can't ask for much better bound shooting a 2200 damage that game. I just felt like you always saw him just flying across the map. Right. Ooh. He really was soaring, though. Comfortably yeah, I'm, I'm crazy, man. I was <laughs> watching bound play. I was, I was scratching my head, man. I was like, what is going on? This man just knows more than anyone else on the map. He's, he's shooting grenades and then immediately flipping around to go look at the spawn behind him. What is up with that? But that being said, uh, game two, we're going to see a, a, a different breed of Halo because we're going to have that sniper rifle to worry about, that right on Plaza. So we'll see how that plays an impact. And we're going to see more of a setup base, right? On uh, truth, it's it's more about playing a dynamic role with your teammate. That way you can always collapse on whatever you need to collapse on. Plaza going to be a little bit different because your players are going to have to play a, just a bit more separated to make sure that they're blocking out initial spawns and having faith in your sniper rifle player to really take advantage of those spawn traps and hit those shots and keep those players on under suppression at, at all times. I'm, I'm very excited to watch this plaza map. As am I. And, you're, and yeah, there's a lot more corridors here in plaza, so it's going to be, like you said, more expanded play or unless a team opts to just kind of connect together and just, you know, fly at one target to try to win a situation like that with just sheer firepower mm -hmm. timing. So I'm ready to start if you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. Let's get it going, man. Plaza. Here we go. Incredible map. Uh, I, like I said, <laughs> I don't expect to see Bound and Neptune slow down anytime soon, but we saw great moments from Guitar Hero, dude, and Gold Star BR. I think it's just about getting that next step in, right? They, it seems as if they can just move it one step forward, t think about that next spawn, get yourself in position, and just do not let Bound and Neptune out of your sights. Don't let them get in a better position. Keep them back on those spawns. When you find those kills, have have confidence in your shot i know gold star and B, uh gold star br guitar hero dude some of the best shots in the game just find your opportunities beam those players down and keep your kills uh keep your kills together don't let don't uh don't start going trade for trade with these players Let's see here i think bound is going to be our player it's going to be going for the burn immediately trying to get there he survives and gets the kill this is going to be great now I wonder if his, if his teammates over already oh, have blue, they're already ready for a mess punch up, but they don't want that because sniper's up. So they're leaving blue open, that's great. You see Bound, he he knows he had that overshield and that he needs to play forward, right? He could have easily went and got that sniper rifle. Instead, he lets it uh, go into the hands of Neptune, who's an incredible sniper, and he keeps that overshield forward so he can put down some damage and he can potentially get away from this gunfight in the yard as well. The beautiful use of that overshield right there. And now the sniper yeah, I love rifle. That he, he prioritized grabbing the combo as well, so they really have basically snaked control of every single weapon on the map, having the combo sniper. They're side by side now, <laughs> yeah. trying to live. I think Bound looked to his right. He was like, uh, are you really with me right now, Neptune? <laughs> He's like, he can move. But uh, that being said, these players are just playing as fast and aggressive as possible. They're going to find these oh. players that are cool. Oh, my Bound. I know we didn't see that I'm on stream. Playing. I had that on my own personal POV. And um, same. That was uh, that was something to watch right there as he comes away with that fight. But you see, they, they, already, they're already yeah. holding forward and you already put, put damage on these players. And they caught one through the bottom flank, so now they maybe I'm not sure if they if they know that the other player is still at bottom net and he's just waiting. But that is the spawn trap they have set up right now is a nest spawn trap as they're blocking blue and nest. Well, like I blue think blue and loop. Sorry. Right, and I think that spawn that Bound just saw, he saw Gold, uh, Gold Star BR spawn uh, at that top nest, and the second he saw that, he's like, "Yeah, that player is a bottom lift. There's no way he's not, because there's no way he would get that spawn unless that player was sitting in bottom lift." And now they just know that they can isolate these fights out once again. They're doing just an incredible job at checking everything, making sure they play as fast and aggressive as possible. The Bound is trying to find this player. He does eventually wow. find him. And uh, and all of a sudden, this is just textbook, man. Yeah, they're using every advantage. Like that combo is just coming in clutch every single time just to get a quick no shield player. And they're resetting it again. They know it's going to be Nest and Blue. Checking all the corners. They still have sniper control. They're going to be able to grab the sniper and the overshield. Couldn't really ask for more. And a uh, 10 lead. <laughs> it opens up so fast, and they these guys are playing wonderfully together, right? This I think 
you can just tell that they prefer plaza to truth i think at the moment you can just see how well they're playing they, they're making sure they block everything necessary they're checking every corner they are playing as fast as and rambunctious as possible and you can just feel that they are just as confident as as you can be i believe like bound i think yeah eight kills for bound it's almost when he has this new combo in hand it's almost as if there's two sniper rifles on the map it's like they're playing refuge or something because there's just no room to breathe as neptune finds the two kills as bound uses himself as a bait piece but those two kills are going to be uh super important because it allows uh, it allows neptune to go grab that sniper rifle for free and now he's going to be able to position himself wherever he feels like he needs to be to take advantage of that sniper rifle It looks like he's opting to rotate it away down and maybe live in the loop side of the map. Yeah, the fact that this wow. man is living. He's trying his best. Yeah, this is great. Maybe he can get out of here. Mm. I mean, he wasn't able to live, but what it did do is it pulled these players out of position, right? Now they're not in a great position to take this fight. They do find the trade outs, but they just, they don't really benefit from chasing that kill. Obviously you have to make sure that sniper rifle gets out of the hands of Neptune. You can't let them stay alive. But uh, now right. they're all of a sudden they're stuck back in yard and these players are just gonna play with each other. They know they just have to go trade for trade. It's five to 15. I just don't see Bound and Neptune allowing these players to, to claw their way back in. Right, I mean, they, Red Team, I think Gold or Guitar Hero dude still has control of that, uh, or Gold Star has control of Sniper, so we'll see if maybe he can do something here with it. But they're already ready top middle, Blue, Blue Team's already ready to get this next custom, so. Yeah, absolutely, Gold Star, it just hits the shot. There it is, this is great, this is what we want to see, hit the shot, maybe they can get the control of the top mid here, it's going to pop very soon, this overshield. Well, Guitar Hero dude was able to get that overshield. He uses that overshield to find the oh, superior dude. positioning on bound, finds that kill, and it's just chasing Neptune. <laughs> finds Great that game. kill. Great job by uh, by Guitar Hero dude and Gold Star BR. If you're coming back in this game, this is how you do it, right? It's true. Still down by quite a bit, but they have control of the sniper still. And they have the timing on the next overshield. They're still winning slaves. They have to just survive here, keep each other alive. So they have to get this like quickly because now blue team now they're both up now bound is already on his way making his way to keep neptune alive so they kind of lost that timing on that loop slay right there right and it's just it just doesn't feel as if they have that same comfortability that we saw from neptune and bound like they, they have the same concepts wow. right they're playing the same concept it just doesn't feel as if they have those hours of practice that bound and neptune have of uh, making those concepts work the, the execution from bound and neptune right. just look flawless when they do it yeah i need it to be like once they have that slayer right there just keep it snowballing by keep you know they need to secure that loop player kill that guy and then move on to bound but the you know neptune did a really good job just living delaying not dying right there as he had two players on him and i think he got hit with the sniper possibly as well so that was really really good oh sudden i think bound is just looking for that player over at the at top Did gold he live? oh no oh. That's the trades, those are the trades you talk about that you don't want. You really need to live right there and, and then they can take out bound and survive and start, you know, clawing their way back the into this match. I believe they do have the combo. I think Goldstar just picked up the, uh, yep, got the combo ready. So let's see if he can use this to at least negate the overshield if he's not able to grab it. I mean, Bound is, uh, he's just trying to put as little space between the two of them. He has that LR, you know, it's, it's basically the power, uh, the weapons that, uh, oh my, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, man. I'm just watching this action. <laughs> it's getting me all tongue twied watching these players just fly forward. But, uh, he wanted to, he side. wanted to use that LR to just really, uh, keep that distance close. Use that LR that has the superior power, firepower and just kill that noob combo player. He did just that, but all of a sudden, you know, two players go down once again. And I just feel like as if Guitar Hero Dude and Gold Star BR are just, they're, they're getting to the point that they want to get. It's just, it's five minutes too late, right? You can't have that 10 to zero start that Neptune and Bound had. And all of a sudden we're seeing great gameplay from Gold Star and Guitar Hero Dude in the second half. It's just how much longer can you hold this up between between the two of them before Neptune and uh, Bound start really heating up and finding their individual kills. But that being said, seven kill deficit just took them Maybe both down right there yep they need to do it now though there no more slip ups they really can't afford to, to go down a player right now and looks like that blue fight okay they're trading you know 
Not that is okay, but it's gonna have to be better than okay for the come for the comeback right now. Right now, Neptune, he's just gonna push this player in the backyard. The noob combo's in hand, but he hit both those players. They're both tagged up. Can Bound come in there it is. and find the kill? I don't think. Did he find a trade out? I'm not sure. No. I... No, they actually, Red Team actually got played out and mm. Bound right now is being chased. So maybe if they can kill Bound here. But Bound is hiding oh. and gets a great back. back. And then the drop back clambers to keep that player uh, preoccupied so Neptune can come in. And I think that that just cost, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say a cost. He baited himself so yeah. well there. Yeah, he baited himself so well in that push. I think that's going to do it. We're going to see our first team go to the grand finals after Bound finds his next kill. And oh, I, maybe I spoke too soon because Gold Star PR just threw a stellar nade to take down that player. And all of a sudden, they are trapped in this bottom nest. This is the spawn trap where you can make some things happen. Unfortunately for them, they, they don't have a sniper. They overshield as well. They, yeah, they have cool. the overshield. They have to keep him alive. Make sure the OS player doesn't get back smacked or melted. They're keeping them alive, but it's coming at a heavy oh, cost. Trying. Yeah. Those two players just valiant effort. Yeah. I mean, he was lucky he didn't get back smacked in the first place. I think the player got a hit on him and it just, you know, it was a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Didn't quite count as the back smack, but that is going to do it, man. An absolutely incredible place from Bound and Neptune right there. I mean, it, that was a 2v2, and we saw Bound almost dropped 3,000 damage. That's just unreal. You don't, you don't see that in 2v2s that often where players just put output just massive amounts of damage uh, like bounded that game. Absolutely incredible job by these players. And, you know, it go, shout out to Guitar Hero, dude, and Gold Star BR, right? They're going to have a chance to play for that third place pricing. So they're, they're not going away, right. right? There's still opportunity. There's still money on the board for them. They can do it. And um, uh, we're, we're going to see what, how they... Uh, how they take on that game that uh, third place prize because I think I think these guys are something to look out for they, they they show promise It's just bound and Neptune just seem to be on another level in that final game That was really exciting to watch Line and dive and so we're gonna see how these these uh, it's gonna be the constellation match and then we'll see how bound and How, how that next match goes as well. I'm excited to see mm -hmm. How the finals are gonna play out in the final coming rounds right so that being said guys we're going to take a short break we'll have our other semifinals coming up relatively soon i believe we do have uh scary scary and insane. uh just saying going to be confirmed for that semifinals we'll see which team makes it out of round four to take them on but that being said we're going to take a short break we'll be right back with you guys welcome back everyone we have our next semi-finals match going on unfortunately we did see the 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 myth the legends of uh a proximity and exodus fall in that round four that we saw incredible matches from them in round two and round three just weren't quite able to clutch it up in round four but that being said we have uh, two new um, uh, two new challengers apollo nine and 10k hours in going to be taking on a uh, scary and just saying in our semifinals, truth plaza regret uh you know like we said we said it earlier lads this is the money twos lobby there's no excuse if you don't get in from this best of three then you probably didn't deserve to get in because there there is nothing more that you can do to say hey these are a perfect map uh, these are the perfect maps to prove who should be in the grand finals that's right I mean, we just had a great matchup earlier. It was super sweaty all the way through. Kind of, you know, took some turns that we didn't expect in between some matches and uh, went all the way to game three. Absolutely, yeah. So we're going to see. And uh, I think we're I think we're going to see some some more uh, action that's going to be incredible. I think one thing we should say, we have Saiyan in the lobby, right? Uh, pro player, incredible player. Uh, one of the one of the best Halo 5 players currently playing the game. So it'll be interesting to see how he meshes with Scariotic, who's also another just insanely impressive player, right? So these it's two a great players. talent, right? Yep. That being said, Apollo 9 is nothing to, to scuff at, right? He is an absolutely uh, talented player who we just saw him play extremely well with 10k hours in. So we'll see we'll see if they're able to put up a, a fight versus Saiyan. I mean, the, 
I think everyone everyone's gonna say it, right? Iscariotic and Saiyan are your favorites to win in, in this round. Just how like Mound and Neptune were. Like we saw Guitar Hero dude and Gold Star BR pull off some impressive moments. And I think we'll see them. I think we can see Apollo 9 and 10k hours and do the same thing here. But that being said, I think we have truth as our game one, right, Laz? Are we are we ready to roll? Right. We are ready to roll with truth. We got it. I think everyone's good to go as well. I'm excited to see how this turns out right off the rip. Um Absolutely. What do you want to see? Start off with. I mean, I kind of want to see this mystery play yeah. 10k hours. Kind yeah, of interesting, I'm interested, intrigued to see this gameplay. Yeah, I think I think that's who we start off with, right? 10k hours, and we see what he does off start. Whether he's going to be that impact player that's needed for them to take this victory. But let's get us started on up with some truth. I'm excited, man. That's just I I, I love Halo, especially when we get to these later rounds uh, of the tournament where we just right, see... and then these particular three maps, right? This is mm -hmm. good. There's there's this line up here. There's nothing more you can ask for. That being said, uh, let's see what what are we gonna prioritize? Right, we talked about the tack magnum, right? Let's get that camouflage. Let's get the tack mag with that camouflage, and let's get the new combo. I think that's what we saw Bound and Neptune do so well in their games. The combo. They, they constantly went for that combo, man. Nonstop. That thing was like, it was just allowing a lot of openings to happen very quickly, and then they were always ready to collapse on the next spawn cycle we also want to see the initial camo live because we saw bound unfortunately well i mean he got hawkeyed whoever saw him in the window but we'll see if they can live with the camo already we lose one player though yeah 10k hours in just has the advantage immediately went down from the team shot and just saying is able to grab that camouflage i'll say and play in his top position yeah it's interesting he hasn't opted to go for that noob combo and he's not gonna go do it but he knows there's a player in that carbo you know that player made an effort not to be shown and uh saying still just he has his eye his eyes set and he's gonna find the easy oh i said it was easy i thought it was gonna be a back smack but that player turned just in time to make sure that he got some damage on saying and get that trade out that was an absolutely critical play although they didn't get that uh he, that player did have to die getting that damage in on that camo player allowing that trade out to happen stops a bit of the momentum that saiyan and scariotic had off the start but that being said uh these players they immediately go and re-establish their top control they find the player that spawned over at the p side and immediately make the other player one shot and it seems as if uh scariotic's just gonna eventually take down apollo 9 and he's already looking towards car 2 to find the player there he finds that kill and all of a sudden they have him on the nastiest spawn cycle you could possibly be i think there's five seconds in between each spawn of these players and that's going to give scariotic and saying a plenty of time to move across this map and find uh find great positioning that was intense those are some really good shots by, by scary top middle and he got out of dodge and he still has that combo in his back pocket he managed to pick it up you see he's got both players top center here so i'm not really sure red team kind of has to kind of yeah, it's very difficult to lift top center there, and blue team has basically a base and P2, so it's much better positioning. They slayed him out, and they're just waiting for the car spawns. All right, you can see Scariotic. He stands on that top mid uh, platform because he knows absolutely that if I stand here, I know they're going to get a car spawn because of what my teammate's doing. And if they decide to jump up straight away from that car bubble, I can just land down some easy shots, back that player down, keep him weak, and allow my teammate to move in towards the car side to find that kill. And so far, we are seeing Saiyan and Scariotic play as a unit together. I think better than we've seen anyone play thus far in the tournament. They are just absolutely rolling together. They're finding these players. They're they're taking them out of position, though they might have just no. yep. The camo did get burned, so maybe that's the one thing that we haven't seen them do thus uh, great yet. Just be on top of that camo no time. Thing. It didn't seem they were aware of the camo coming up at all in that situation. Yeah, maybe they were prioritizing getting slays, but someone was able to still get through and, and snake it underneath them. But yeah, they're still up by ten right now, and they've consistently had. Pretty good spacing on the map. <laughs> oh, he was trying to survive oh, after yeah, that stick, trying not to go down, but <laughs> that would have been that would have been good, right? But fortunately, he goes down. I think, well, fortunately for the other team, <laughs> I think uh, I think we've seen that happen a couple of times already this game, where the player that shouldn't get one kill ends up getting two and gets traded out. And I think yes. that's been the bane of uh, 10k hours in, in Apollo 9. They just really haven't been able to to find their footing because they're constantly one player down. And now we see 10k. He really is just sitting in this top control. And I think this is 
this is just not the play right we've seen it happen time and time again with these players where they sit in that top mid position and they end up getting an easy death because these players just have superior positioning it's it's in a situation where Saiyan's in right now where he's just trying to buy time for his teammate to come into the side door and he immediately is just playing that top mid position but as safe as possible right he's trying to make sure no player from red can shoot him he's milking his life as well as possible so scariotic can come and, and find that kill or find the damage necessary for saying to stay alive that's the kind of top mid play that i would expect to see from these teams uh over in this semi-finals match but just saying and scariotic putting on a show right now 20 to 7 next camouflage is going to be coming up within the next 20 seconds if there's any chance of uh 10k and uh, apollo 9 coming back in this game they have to to get this next camouflage and get away with it right and then they're gonna have to also live with it not just grab it but also actually survive with it and get to a position where they can actually start getting some slays and oh it's not looking good though the camera's gonna drop here in about five seconds i believe the oh. burn was at 40 on the last cycle you see that you see that filthy spawn <laughs> one one team spawned in the car bubbles the other team spawned on the p street with the camouflage up and of course it's gonna be just saying and the patient grab as he knows he doesn't need this right now he's got a big lead it's better just to get, go for the slays and he still is able to grab it with full shields right he's able to grab it and then he, he gets himself picked mm -hmm. off he gets picked off, but that yeah. the Saiyan was able to pick off the player that was top mid. And just getting traded, even though you wanted that camo to play more of an impact, the ability just to pull a player out of position, get them traded out when you have oh, 20 kills. absolutely still a huge yeah. win. Yes, for, for blue team still. They can afford to do to do that and go for trades. Even if it's trading the camo, it really doesn't matter when its numbers are so close to 25 at this point. All right, 10k hours in, trying to do his best to survive, but Just Saiyan has him in his sights. He does survive that fight, but how much longer can they withhold? They are down by 10 kills, 11 needed to win. Only one kill left for Saiyan and Scariotic to take this game one. And it's just, Saiyan immediately knew where that player was, and Scariotic's just going to come from the side and pick him up. 25 to 14 that might be one of the more dominating games we've seen since probably uh i'd say that bound and neptune show that we saw on plaza or was that bound and neptune we saw some team just go crazy on on plaza and then the, the it round was one. yep it was those on, on plaza it was like an 11 to, to zero yeah i mean uh, <laughs> saying shooting at 73 point three percent that game 2700 damage you know at 16 and 8 double positive along with scariotic i think this is the first time we've seen a team have 15 assists that, that's a massive amount of assists to have in a 25 kill game you can just tell how well they're playing off each other and how they were really trying to take those complimentary angles but that being said if you're in if you're a part of this apollo 9 and 10k hours in squad glass what are you saying to make sure that you are prepared for this next map they absolutely need to just control those the, the custom top center that's going to be huge we, and we know that blue team's going to be very patient we saw scariotic you know on the, on the last grab he was super patient even though he was he had the lead he still didn't go for the burn immediately he made sure he had a, you know an advantage in that 1v1 he was taking on the street before he grabbed the camel even though he was up by about 12 or so um didn't matter so we know that they're very they can play patiently so red team has to take that into account and maybe isolate one one player and secure that that custom top middle it's you know it's the same thing with the sniper rifle that rifle needs to be used you can't let it go in either of you know saiyan or scariotic's hands because they're both going to be very good with it right i think it, it's getting to the point to where they have to grab that sniper rifle and if they feel any kind of pressure you just start wasting away bullets to make sure that uh to make sure that uh it doesn't go into their hands because that sniper rifle is going to be playing such an impact with that being said uh plaza i think we are ready to start it let's get our game to up and running oh man I, i'm excited i, I want to see more from apollo 9 and 10k hours and right we saw them playing a tense uh, three game series between proximity and uh, uh who was proximity's partner man i feel so bad i just forgot proximity you know game, game runs so fast we saw them uh, play a close series between those two players and i want to see them keep that momentum from that game three and try to try to extend this series out a little bit but uh i think just saying it's scariotic they don't want any anything like that happening they're gonna play as aggressive as possible play for that sniper rifle play for that camo play for that noob combo almost uh to the tune of what we saw bound and neptune do in our previous match and uh i think we'll start off with uh with 
saying if we can i want to start off with saying this he's going to be this player that's going to be contesting the overshield landing down some great shots in order to let scary Yotic grab that overshield and then scary Yotic gets the overshield and immediately plays forward towards that player in the loop and saiyan is able to land down some shots in this player in market finds that kill and already an easy two to zero start for saiyan scary Yotic still has about a quarter of that overshield left to work with and saiyan immediately finds that player in the loop spawn finds that kill this is such fast and aggressive play so I'm going to actually move on with Scary as he's going to move pushing over towards this yard with that sniper rifle in hand. <laughs> Let's that player think he has an opportunity to kill that top gold. But instead, uh, you know, Saiyan has something to say, comes from behind, gets that kill. And now it's uh, it's all looking great for Scary Yotic and Saiyan at the start of this game as they are just running through this team from the start. I don't know if I lost Laz. I, I can't hear Laz if he is here, so I apologize for that. If the if that is the case, we'll see what if we can get that mic issue fixed. I had scary a phone call. Oh, I turned my phone down. I'm sorry about that. It's all good. Scary I had it off. <laughs> Scaryotic still has a sniper rifle in top gold. We'll see if he can find some player. Oh, he finds a player over at market. Easy shot, eight to zero lead. But I feel like we're seeing deja vu right here, Laz, as it's a nine to zero start for Scaryotic. And just saying, in this game too, they have no signs of, show, of slowing down. It, it's getting to the dangerous point. Uh, I think if you if you go down to 11 to zero, I, I, I'm gonna say no, I don't think there's an opportunity for them to come back. There's still four bullets in the sniper rifle over is going to be coming up in 30 seconds there something something needs to happen it needs to happen now for apollo 9 and 10k hours in to win this game right this is the second 10-0 lead we've seen now i mean i would love to see how you know, how bound and neptune would play oh my goodness <laughs> they're just ready they're just ready scariotic's already top middle i think he got he had the sniper and the os in the first life and he's ready to do it again See, it's nope, he's just gonna push forward and, and let Saiyan get the OS instead. Right, but I like that play because it lets Saiyan is actually yeah, yeah. gonna be like he plays forward. He knows Saiyan's his back player. He lets him go refill that top position while getting the overshield, which allows him to be in just a better position to challenge out these players. I think Scariotic knew that his job there wasn't really to to get those two kills. It was more just to buy Saiyan time to get that overshield. He's gonna make a couple players weak. They're gonna find an easy kill because all they have to worry about at this point is getting these trade outs, and they're doing a wonderful job at that. And when you have shots like oh, I say that Saiyan almost got the dirty moves put on him as that player just started uh phasing through each one of his bullets but uh 14 to 2 lead new sniper rifle coming up soon scary Otic gonna be challenging for it he wins that fight over at the nest and now all of a sudden we see saiyan taking this top position uh with scary Otic in order to kill this player over at the top dip and they do just that and it's like at this point you know they don't really have to worry about getting that sniper rifle they have so much time to work with it's 17 to 2 at this point just keep flooding out the spawns keep finding these players play at your own pace and make these players uh make these players always on their back foot and that's so far they've just done an incredible job uh, at dictating the pace of the game as scary Otic finds another head with that sniper rifle he's on a he killing knew he spree he was aiming up he was already ready for the jump up that's really impressive and now it looks like he couldn't get to loop quickly enough he's already ready anticipating that i'm wondering if he's trying to slay these guys out and then post up with the sniper on the glass for the nest spawn trap after i'm wondering yeah i would assume they're both here to collapse first but you know <laughs> very very patient yeah you know you know you're in trouble when the when you start playing watching each other's corners oh, waiting for no. the players to come into you and yeah i think uh interesting choice to go bottom middle here maybe red team is trying to just you know get out of a predictable situation but they're finding them on their routes anyways uh scary Otic finds the no scope on 10k hours and immediately pushes for that double kill and it's all but over for Apollo 9 and 10k hours and they do have an opportunity to still make some money tonight there is a uh there is a third place oh what Oh, that was just on my screen. Match. Yeah, there is a constellation prize. Sorry, on my screen, the the sniper rifle shot looked a little weird. Uh, that didn't <laughs> come up on stream. But there is that third place prizing. So we're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna see Apollo Nine and Ten K Hours and play once again. They're gonna be going up against Guitar Hero Dude and Gold Star BR in our third place match. 
that being said i think guys uh, we <laughs> that was an incredible game unfortunately for 10k hours and he wasn't able to quite find a kill that game as scary and can just saying just put it to the limit uh we're gonna take a quick break so we can get our third place pri uh, our third place match up and ready for you guys so just stay with us we'll have some more halo action relatively soon and then we'll have a grand finals after that which will be a best of five between scariotic and just saying and versus uh bound and neptune that might be just one of the better matches that we could see and i'm very excited to see how that shakes out in our grand finals well, let me turn I'm an observer. Nice. All right, we are back and we are ready to see this consolation match here between Apollo oh. 9, 10k <laughs> hours, and yeah. Guitar Hero Dude and the Gold Star BR. Yeah, I didn't even know we were back. It's wild, man. <laughs> yeah. We are back. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. You know, it happens, guys. But uh, yeah, third place match. We're going to have Rig, Regret, and Pasa be the three games necessary to if it goes gonna go if it goes to three games we'll see plaza as our game three rig as our game one regret as our game two these five uh, these teams i think will be relatively close in skill range uh i i did have to give a little bit of an edge i'd say guitar hero dude and gold star br just because they had a bit of a closer game in their semifinals. obviously now uh, bound and neptune still played extremely well and and made pretty easy work but um I think I think they have a little bit more momentum coming in. They didn't get, uh, you know, Apollo Nine did get a little Apollo Nine and uh, 10K hours in just uh, a little demoralizing in their game too, uh, as they lost 25 to two. Maybe we'll see if that plays an impact in their gameplay. But I think you know, shake it off, right? Reset yourself. You know, it's expected that Saiyan and Scary Hotic might be the best teams, uh, some of the best players in the in the world at Halo Five. So you know, you can. You can reset yourself you know you're good players you're in this you're in this third place match there's 50 dollars on the line go in there make your make your money man get your cream right i have to agree with that i think the mindset's gonna be huge here on red team's favor i think 10k uh you know not to really highlight it but you know he struggled to get a, a kill i think in the last match and so it really depends on how well that team is able to just reset and kind of have you know amnesia about whatever happened and just come in hard right here and come out on top here um but i would have to agree i think i'd have to give it to uh guitar hero dude and gold star br for the same reasons that they they kind of showed a little bit more life in their in their fight and you know against uh neptune and bound and and both teams that came up to a similar start actually on plaza right both teams came out to a 10-0 right uh deficit off the off the break so that was very interesting to to kind of watch that it felt like we were saying deja vu just replaying itself <laughs> yeah, i think i think both after. teams have a little bit of a ptsd from their last uh from their Whoa. last plaza play uh because it, it definitely wasn't the greatest start uh for either of those teams right it's just uh they're gonna have to really find their own ways and both of them they they started off relatively slow and i think uh, we saw guitar hero dude and gold star br pick it up towards the end but even then it was just too little too late but that being said i think we're we have everything ready right i think our plaza we have everyone on the right teams i think we can get this started we're on our blast oh man you know third place we we got some money on the line you know it's, it's always a little bit more exciting when there's a when there's a little purse to be won at the end of the games we'll see who comes out strong in this game ah, so sorry about that <laughs> what, what happened we're gonna have it's supposed to be rig regret plaza oh no, it's I'm already rig. ready to see game three yeah damn i i, I <laughs> totally got caught up on that too well you know mistakes happen guys we'll we'll be back momentarily <laughs> just a quick reset well, how about we just skip game one? We skip game two because we both know these teams are going to split, right? And then we just go just straight gonna go to, to game, game three, three, you know? Yeah. Best of one. You know, that, maybe that's how they should do third place prizing for now on, right? It's like you're in third place. It's a best of one, baby. It's it's all in. Cards are <laughs> on the line. They're, we don't do best of threes in our in our uh, third place match. I, I would actually be interested in turning it like that. Type one in the chat if you want to see that. Yeah, never know. But um, that being said, rig the correct map to play it on. We'll see what happens on this map. Uh, the camo 
sniper always going to play an impact that scatter shot i know we're talking about the tower control that we saw in previous rounds on rig uh laz i'd like to see one of these players just get that scatter shot and make a little house in that in that tower area right get with your teammate just always have those complimentary angles and if someone decides to push you in tower pull out that scatter shot give them a quick uh quick couple bolts to the face and uh disintegrate them it's useful there right we're in the white hall anywhere in the in, anywhere where you have you know like you said good like walls around you you can just bounce it off and kind of isolate a, a battle would be really good Let's see who's gonna grab this camo off the break i think both Looking players like both teams are baiting it uh -oh. <laughs> both players went underneath and that's gonna Ooh. cost them as apollo 9 is able to just run over top i don't think he was expecting to be able to get the camouflage <laughs> no contest that was great <laughs> And they also, right in. yeah, they also get the sniper rifle as well. So Apollo 9's working his way up. And I think the sniper rifle player did end up trading. So Apollo 9's going to have his one-on-one -on -one fight. He's going to win that versus a guitar hero, dude. And I want to see where these next spawns are happening. 10K hours is already making his way towards this nest to see if he can contest the sniper hey, rifle. Going. He gets the kill as, a, as Apollo 9 is working to get that help. But so far, both these teams really just jockeying for position, trying to get away with the sniper rifle, get away with the sniper rifle. Big shot. live here from Apollo right now. He actually managed to survive there. He still has the camo and he's managed managed to grab the scatter shot. He's out of the camo now, but he's behind both of the players here. I'm not sure if he's aware that he has an enemy right there on the other side. He's able to pull out the scatter shot. Now they can maybe collapse on this player. Wondering if they're gonna be, they have to do it quickly because there you go, bunker splits are coming on. This is great. Right. Good, good spacing with the, the teammate as well as easy picks here on the bunker. And 10k hours in still has about six bullets of that sniper rifle to work with. He knows where they're spawning. He's looking for heads. He finds the body on the player moving to the connector. He knows there's another player in the white corner, but can't get the comms out fast enough to his teammate. And that player is going to actually take down both of them. Gold Star BR making absolutely critical plays. It, it was looking as if it was going into the favor of Apollo 9 and 10k hours in. And then all of a sudden he has a sniper rifle. He's in a forward position and he's pushing out these spawns. And he finds another kill with the snapshot shot at the bottom of bunker he's going absolutely off we're tied six all and he's already positioning himself to watch the carbine spawns he knows they're there he's waiting for some person to pop up and he finds another kill it's going all into the favor of gold star br and guitar hero dude in the last 30 seconds they are just finding kill after kill and the camo flash man what, what they're just ready for the camo everything's just yeah. going in their hands this is very good gameplay to we're gonna see how this camo plays out here he's already running through does he have camo and scatter Oh, there we oh go. my goodness, he has all the weapons. The Guitar Hero Dude's got camo. Scatter's out now, and he's got the, this... It's like this... Gold Star still has Sniper. I think that Sniper's empty. He's out of ammo as yeah. well. It is empty, so he's just running around with it. I think you see how they're just playing in a and one's in the elevator, one's in a bottom position. They're close to each other so they can help. And uh <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Guitar Hero dude just looks rifle. up, finds the killing, uh, <laughs> finds the killing spree, and now can make his way towards the sniper rifle. He's gonna check all the positions around him. And I like how he uses this camo to get in a bottom position, right? He doesn't want to just be standing on that sniper rifle. He wants to make sure there's no players around him. When he gets the sniper rifle, he wants it to be relatively free. Unfortunately, he just gets a bit of a bad timing right there and just can't quite hit that player at the white corner. But that being said, they have a, a five kill though. lead and uh, he's just wasting sniper ammo. I'm surprised he was able to live there. I was, wasn't sure if he was gonna have to maybe play that off the map and just get all the weapons, you know, but he's able to survive. He's still being very aggressive. The needler gets pulled out. <laughs> wow. You know, when 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 you the don't see that not, every day. When the pistol's not working, you know, you just you gotta try whatever Turn this. <laughs> whatever you can to win the game. It's worked in the past, I guess. I think well, the Halo 5 needler has to be the best needler ever in any Halo series though, right? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, just... it's very annoying. You know, and imagine if you could dual wield with it. Just it would be the new meta. <laughs> oh, but uh, aggressive jump up there by Guitar Hero, dude. Didn't quite work out for them. I think 10k hours is gonna fall off the map. So Guitar Gold Star BR gonna come. Gold Star is ready for the camo at least. This is looking good for them. He's ready for the bunker splits. Yeah, like I mean, he immediately gets onto that camouflage. I, I'm, you know, I'd like to see them have a little bit more. Con they, they just got the last one. You should know the exact time on it. So you 
But that being said, they get it. They get it for free. As, uh, as Guitar Hero dude was able to keep him off Gold Star BR. And now this Camo player is able to reposition, find some easy shots on the player in tower. Does eventually have to back down. But so far, they're playing really well off each other, right? Even though that Camo player couldn't see the player above him, just popping down those shots underneath him, it distracts that player was above him. Let's, uh, let's his teammate come in, finish up that player over in engine two. And the Camo just playing an absolute impact in this game. It was about neck to neck, Laz, until we saw saw both these camos going to the favor of gold star br and guitar hero dude and all of a sudden they have opened up a nine kill lead in this game one right and he's just getting more slays now i'm thinking the scatter shot's been up for a little bit i wasn't sure if a guitar, guitar hero, dude hero was gonna, dude i think he it. does have it now that's yeah. right he's finally grabbed it there you go i was thinking he was gonna grab it earlier when he was rotating in so they are on top of it they have all the weapons yeah, in fact, if we can move. Looks like Red Team is ready to, to hopefully isolate this battle here with, with Guitar Hero. Oh. Able to get away though. Oh, they get him right there, but they're trading. That's not what you want to see. There we go. Red Team is getting a one kill, you know, kind of just scraping by. They have to continue to do that, but they can't afford any more trades. They only need six more before it's over. You see, and I feel as if this team should be a little bit more aware. Like, I feel as if they just had a missed opportunity right there. They knew, they should have known that they were spawning over in that carbine area. They could have played a little bit more aggressive, maybe thrown some nades like over towards that catwalk to find them out of rotation. Instead, they kind of opt for a slower play style, which allows for the trade to come in. And now 10k hours in has to win a critical one on one. He does do that, so they're still in this game. But if you know where the spawn is, you know, don't let them come to you. Play your game, dictate the pace of the game game and make sure that you're in the better that you're in a better position but 10k hours in you do that little spring jump to catwalk you don't actually see that that often especially in forge just because the map is so busy but in twos you can really utilize that spring jump to get up into the catwalk just because you know there's less players on the map you you have more freedom to move so good movement from him good recognition but you know once again camouflage in the hands of gold star br right he's trying to secure the sniper for his team as well he's trying to get a little greedy here but this is a great play to match it and now the sniper is down as well so they can definitely isolate this last player here get in there with 10k before apollo spawns and they know the sniper is down around the zigzag tower that's exactly where gold star is headed towards stacking the camo and the snipe see if he's ready to make a play here <laughs> doesn't get it it's the perfect miss of the snipe oh my goodness that's what we want to see that's so kind. That's, that's a confidence Let's boost go. going into game two, right? It's like you already were doing what you needed to do and to win game one, and you put a little extra for, for game uh, to give you that little momentum boost for game two. As we're gonna move on, what's our next map? I believe it's um. It's the perfect. If I'm wrong, oh my goodness! Yeah, that's we're we're always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh let's, let's go take a look at these stats real fast 15 and 6 from gold star br 10 and 8 from guitar hero dude nine assists between the two of them great effort from those two players i think we're gonna see a little bit more of that aggression in this game too but uh why don't you give us a little rundown of what you would like to see these teams do on regret what's the keys to victory to winning uh regret uh in the 2v2 last the caster <laughs> yeah <laughs> just see some sick caster plays i would like to see that but no it hasn't really been used definitely just you know controlling that combo is so important and then of course the overshield those two are the keys to the map and so you want to make sure that you're collapsing on players and living and you're not getting average when i don't want to see anyone flying top center when their teammate dies unless they're gonna hide i suppose but you know just definitely i want to see some good halo here it's a good symmetrical map Everyone knows regret. Everyone knows regret. Regret's great. Everyone knows regret. It's such a good map. That being said, guys, we're, we're going to get this up and started. Uh, Laz, I think we have everyone in the right positions, right? I think we can just start this game up. We'll see how these players fare. And uh, man, I'm, I'm excited. This is, uh, I want to see 10K and Apollo 9 put a little bit, uh, make this a bit of a closer game. I think this is a map where they can do it. There's no sniper rifle to worry about, right? We have seen, but they're not really that that sniper team. I feel as if they're a team that can really play their positions well. 
find complementary angles and reprint is just a map that really plays that style where you're constantly collapsing on players you're trying your best to stay alive you're making sure your team shots on point getting out getting your times for the overshield right making sure you have that new combo in hand and i think apollo 9 and 10k hours in i think this is uh this is a map that really works towards their favor that being said all the momentum is with the bungalows right now i mean gold gold star pr and guitar euro dude just absolutely worked in game one and uh, i expect to see them uh keeping that momentum on forward towards game two i'm on board with gold star right now Oh look at that go! Oh. <laughs> just there it is. So that's some good baiting right there. That overshield man. It's like they had perfect positions to find that player that uh, challenged over towards that overshield, and then it gets, uh, Gold Star BR was able to kill the player that went for the noob combo. So now our overshield player is going to have the noob combo and has another player in sight. Immediately pushes forward. He wants that fifty dollar purse, and he's moving to get, secure that for his team. Cash rules everything around him as he just keeps finding kill after. <laughs> kill right that was the perfect stack you do want to see him go for that combo right after that's like the immediate threat so they've got all that in control and we definitely need to see a lot of top mid control so it's already collapsing it's interesting here i'm wondering if, if he knew that they were in red base but i'm wondering if he got the call out as both players took their own individual 1v1s and they were able to trade and here's the next 1v1 looks super even here normally you see like the top mid player you know kind of anchor come in after came in i'm not sure what information we had right that was that was definitely an interesting play decision it's, uh, the question is can they recover in time it seems as if blue team had all the momentum but at least they're trading out their one-on-one -on -one fights at this moment i think if they both went down right there and then they gave up that top position to the red team they could have been a, a, a dangerous spot but so far they're doing a great job every death they've had thus far it's been immediately traded out and this is the first time yep, that we're gonna trade see right both there. these players down at the same time Right. Three kill game, very, very close. Someone grab that caster. I want to see the caster play, right? <laughs> like, I feel like people don't even pick up that caster because it's like, it's just, it, it's another indicator on the map of when the overshield's going to come up, right? Because the caster spawns every two minutes. You know, that, that when it spawns up, it's like, hey, oh, overshield has to be sometime soon. But I mean, at this high level, these players shouldn't have any should problem know. I recognize yeah, it from the overshield. Hey. And that they're trading right now and this is this is crunch time for that os it looks like blue team looks like blue team is going to be able to grab it unless there it is oh uh, you see guitar hero dude just stood on that overshield for just a little bit longer he wanted to make sure that they couldn't really predict the time because that happens a lot right where you can just feel the flow of the game and you're like yeah overshield was probably picked up around that 48 second mark because of where they were and where they should be but if you sit on there you wait it and you put it down to that 44 second mark you might be able to really hit out a player the next time that overshield comes up so it's just that next little step that you can take in order to secure your game and now we start seeing the uh the disrespect coming in oh, from these no. players he's just sitting there and uh, apollo 9 will eventually punish him for the body shots you know and this is uh this is where it gets dangerous right a 14 to 8 lead is not a secure lead that could disappear at any moment not especially on this map, on a map like right rig. yeah I, i'm not rig exactly I regret. I regret. yeah it's such a small this is a very snowballing map and you know we'll see because there's a timing loss with that but you know, they're feeling confident you know they were we'll see how it translates here in these next couple of fights red team does have top mid control that's huge you just want to control Ooh. that i'm wondering I'm wondering where that combo is no one seems to have it See that these players are just <laughs> going from top to bottom, top to bottom, over and over and over again. As Guitar Hero dude is gonna try to find the kill on Apollo 9, he does oh. find that kill. Apollo 9 just barely missing that fight. And now Guitar Hero dude finds 10k hours in, and I think he's gonna let 10k know a little bit more that he learned his lesson this time. Not gonna allow Apollo 9 to come over top and find that kill once again. But uh, man, it feels we haven't even been two minutes since the last overshield last, and I feel like we've seen a game and a half. These players are just playing so right. fast and getting kill non -stop kill. Non-stop action. Yeah, they're, just, they're kind of just challenging each other. Maybe the body disrespect is kind of you know it's fueling this. Okay, we're we're gonna headbutt you and we're gonna we're gonna get in your faces and play aggressively, even though they're down by quite a bit. It might be time to slow it down. I mean, it was time to slow it down a while ago, right? But right. if it's gonna be slowed down, it needs to be happening now. 
Right, you definitely can't Make let sure this they, they overshield. The overshield. Yeah, Gold Star VR is going to be able to get that. He's going to use that overshield to just push forward. I mean, even if he dies and doesn't get a kill, it doesn't really matter because the other team doesn't have it. You have a 10 kill lead. You just have to play trade for trade. And his teammate immediately comes in, finds the assist on one, and then finds a trade 22 to 11, just doubling the score at the moment. And uh, now, you know, nobody on, nobody is safe in this lobby, giving his, team, uh, his teammate a little heads up that you got to play a little bit better next time to be in the same lobby as Gold Star BR. A little hockey disrespect to his own teammate right there. But uh, Guitar Hero dude just flying around. They're finding kills, peeking on out to get a couple more shots on the body. I think we've seen more uh, more pistol ammo be dropped into the dead bodies than we have in an actual body in the last little bit. So just one more slay here in Gold Star's top middle waiting for this 1v1. Maybe you can... There we go. Maybe a 2v1. There it is. Yeah, $50, uh, 50 and, uh, and some pride. For the hands of a uh, for guitar hero dude and uh gold star gold vr, star VR. <laughs> just uh, what an interesting map you can't ask for much uh more of an even stat line between the two though 13 7 and 6 and 12 6 and 6 between the two players you know that's uh that's some teamwork going on right there uh about as even as you can get in that regard uh that being said uh that was all just a uh, you know a little uh teaser for our grand finals that's going to be coming up between uh saiyan scariotic and bounded neptune so i'm very uh, i'm very so excited, excited for that grand finals man so we're gonna get that lobby built on up for you guys so don't go anywhere go tweet out go let people know what's happening we're gonna go on a short break and when we come back we're gonna have that 300 dollars first place prize uh up for grabs we'll see which uh which pair comes away with it do not go anywhere welcome back everyone we have our grand finals between bound and neptune versus saiyan and scary Otic. and guys if you if you haven't been watching these two teams have been on a tear bound and neptune haven't lost a single map all the way up to this grand finals saiyan and scary Otic did exactly the same they have been dominating the competition and here we are it's, it's almost as if we're have uh, an unmovable object about to hit an unstoppable force in this grand finals we have a best of five for you guys here Laz, you want to walk through this best of five and, and show what everyone what they have to expect yeah, Regret's going to be very fast-paced. I'm, you know, I'm assuming both teams are just going to be fighting for that top mid. They're going to be very vicious back and forth. That's what I definitely anticipate. And both teams, you know, they're going to be controlling that combo in the OS. That's just going to be the story we've always seen throughout the entire tournament. But this is going to be probably on a different level of aggression, um, is what I would anticipate, because all four of these players are going to be flying. Um, but also, it seemed, you know, we saw a lot of patience coming out of, you know, because uh, Scariotic, in my opinion, we all know he likes to fly, and we actually saw him being pretty patient and, and, and truth, uh, which is later on at the very end of the bracket. Um, but game two is uh, actually is yeah, it I Empire, Empire, I believe. Empire, right? It's Have we seen these these teams play on? I don't think we've seen these teams play on Empire, but we did see Empire in our first uh, round where we saw that camo and overshield play those impacts, right? Or just a map where you have to prioritize one or the other, and then the map kind of becomes a dynamic, uh, it becomes dynamic after that because you have to figure out was the camo up first, was the overshield up first, which side of the map do we need to be playing, uh, influencing your spawns to make sure you get the you get the better spawn for when those uh, overshields and camos are coming up, using those power ups to the best of your ability. I believe there is a noob combo on Empire 2, and I believe we've seen both these teams really, really take advantage of those noob combos and then what else i think right. plaza is our game three just a classic money's two map uh, that guess. is my personal favorite watch for this series man yeah. because both of these teams i believe were able to 10-0 get a 10-0 or 11-0 start on their opposition that they played and so now they're gonna you know they're gonna see each other matched up on game three on plaza i'm really interested to see as you said the, the you know those two titans colliding on that map that's my personal piques my interest. I want to see how that goes down. Yeah, and then I believe. Uh, so then, what, what was the? Oh my! Why am I? Why am I blanking on map four? Because I know Truth is our. Map we got five, Rig right? next, and yeah, then Truth. So Rig, right? Rig will be our map four. Um, 
Yeah, and Rig, Rig plays very similar to Plaza. It's kind of interesting that we have Plaza and Rig back to back. We'll see a similar play style on both of them. I think Plaza plays just a tad bit faster, a tad bit. Uh, I think you have to make a better plays on Plaza. Rig is a lot more forgiving. But I think we'll see some incredible games. I, I expect this to, I honestly expect this to go to game five, but you know, you never know what happens. But truth, there, there's not a much better map you can ask for to determine who's going to be the winner because truth, uh, midship, it, it's been everywhere, man. Every it's game, everyone, everyone knows how to play it. So it'll be interesting to watch out. Guys, you know, we're here in our grand finals. We really appreciate what the console gaming league has done for us. But they're not done with Halo and they're not slowing down any time soon get involved follow that twitter get on the discord because guys um they're gonna have another tournament june 6 that's uh that's hardly a month away and it, there isn't a determined format for it yet but they are going to be going off community uh what the community wants so if you want to play a 4v4 if you want to play a free-for-all if you want to play a 1v1 a 2v2 make sure you join the discord you join the twitter and and really get your input in there so we know what we're going to be playing on june 6th but with how this broadcast has been going with how these matches have been streamed uh the the exciting moments that we've seen i i don't expect this i don't expect the tournament on june 6th to be any different than the one we're seeing today it's been absolutely fast-paced and, and incredible to watch so guys please get involved we, we really appreciate what console gaming league has been doing for us and that being said if you guys look at the bottom right of your screen you'll see that paradise halo logo right over there i, I think we paradise halo incredible incredible organization they, they make incredible videos. Go follow them on YouTube. Go follow them on Twitter. Laz, you have experience working with Sean and, and the folks over at Paradise Halo. Yeah, go, and go follow Sean, him. the editor. Yeah, uh, add Dinah Sean. I think it's his D-Y-N-A underscore Sean. Give him a follow too. He works really hard on, on his YouTube channel on that project. And we're just, you know, it's a big community project. So we're happy. And I, he's super happy to just come out and, and, and sponsor this event. And it was like, you know. Adding adding to the prize pool and is adding value to the community. And right now, with the way the way Halo is, all these tournaments, you know, like CGL is running these events, and the SWAT Nation, a bunch of other, you know, really good community is organizing these tournaments, and that's what we really need, you know, to keep Halo thriving right now in such a downtime before Infinite. We're all excited for Infinite. <laughs> right. Yeah. Most excited for this finals match too right now. You ready to, to get yeah, it going? I think, I think scary we finally switched switch. over. Yeah. Let's go. Let's we are go. ready. We are waiting for that switch. <laughs> Here we go. With that being said, guys, we we really can't uh express our how gra how grateful we are to have player uh, to have people like Sean and uh, to have organizations like Console Gaming League here supporting the Halo Five scene, and we really really would love you guys to go and, and give them a follow, keep them keep them in your minds, really support the Halo Five grassroots scene. But that being said, I think I think we said enough, lads. Let's get this game one started. Regret. Let's go. Two v two. We're gonna see some fast paced gameplay, noob combo bullets being shot across the map, uh, over shields flying throughout the sky. Uh, I, there's a lot of jumps you can do on regret too. And I expect to see players like Bound and Neptune to make a full use of those, whether it be going up the slides uh, towards that, uh, towards the car street, or maybe getting up into the, to the very top of the map flying, who knows, man, it's just regret. And the, the boost slides that you can do on it are just something else. But I, I want to start off with Bound. I want to see what he's going to do. We saw him make that uh, that sneaky low profile play on the camo and over show before. I want to see if he does a little bit of the same in this game. No, he's actually going to opt to go towards this P1. So they're going to slow play this over shield. He's going to land down some shots on Saiyan. Now looking towards the left. He's going to actually get taken down by Scariotic. A Scariotic finds two. And once again, we're talking about what takes it to the next level. Scariotic staying on this over shield for as long as possible. He just saw them spawn. He's going to get at 41. So what that does, he now has has the instant time and that's eight seconds of dead time that he would have had to waste that overshield but now he's going to have as much overshield as possible for these next couple fights just the uh the awareness from scariotic and this 2v2 is amazing but neptune gonna burn off most of that overshield in that original fight right and Saiyan's controlling that combo right now so that's really the only thing on the board right now besides this since the overshield's been actually burned and the game is still very close zero to three so it's not really like you know, blue team was able to pull away or anything with that. 
Now, I think Neptune did a wonderful job burning out of that overshield. It slowed down the pace of this blue team. But Scariotic still in position to find that trade. Bound is going to trade it out and out himself at four to two lead for Saiyan and Scariotic. Once again, you can see him. He's just sitting there with the uh, scoreboard up, waiting to see those X's disappear from the scoreboard so he knows that they spawn. And now Neptune and Bound pushing their way into the base. And <laughs> Scariotic and uh, Saiyan are ready for them. I mean, you don't usually see that happen where a team pushes into the base and they get pushed right back these teams really jockeying for position they're looking for an opportunity to find a kill and uh they're just uh, we're gonna keep seeing this fast-paced gameplay this just searching around for an opportunity and right there saiyan's trying to make his work but unfortunately for him the help comes from over top scariotic finds a trade out and so far we just keep seeing it over and over again last these players are so quick to the help that they always try to find the trade when possible and it's just gonna be back and forth and Tell this next overshield. Yeah, I'm seeing very consistently patient plays, even though like they are flying through there, that they know when they need to fly and when they need to stop and just wait. And that's that's exactly what needs to happen because the OS is about to drop right now. And we just saw Scariotic go down to Neptune, but they're trading now, and the combo goes down. So it looks like Red Team's gonna be able to secure the overshield. Well, that's insane. In about three or four seconds, it's delayed. It's coming at 40, right? I believe. Yeah, it's at 40. Bound is able to get it. I mean. I appreciate the plan. I think Scariotic just knew that, hey, I don't think I can get there in time and make an impact. Let them get the overshield. Now they're going to slow play themselves. It's interesting that they are opting. If you go to the blue perspective, they're just standing on top side of each by other. side. <laughs> I think they're just trying to burn out. They basically burned half the overshield off by just staying alive and staying away from the red team. So an interesting strategy right there. And it ends up doing quite a bit of work. I think that overshield is completely gone now as they were, he, that player was hit with grenades. Yeah, those over grenades were tunnel. great. Wow. So this is the game. We have eight to six. Red team right now on top, you know, top mid control. They have that combo. They clean, clean up Saiyan right here and just get back up top. Start cycling these spawns. Maybe we'll see them pull away, but it's very, very basically neck and neck right now. Right, and so far we just really seen these teams take advantage of the team shot. You know, we've seen not even the team shot, but just having each other's help, right? They always make sure that there's a trade to happen. And so far, I just think the edge is just slightly gone to Saiyan and Scariotic. I feel as if I've seen them trade out a couple times where they probably shouldn't have gotten a trade, where it was looking all but lost, especially like in that situation where Saiyan died over at P1 and Scariotic comes over top, finds the perfect kill on the player that killed him or stay alive. But that being said, it, it's... Uh, uh, it's like a switch can be flipped at any point in time for Bound and Neptune just get themselves in the in the better situation where they start going away with some kills. And so far, it seems as if they've uh, really applied more pressure. Uh, I've seen Saiyan and uh, Scariotic. They seem to always be playing just a bit more passive, a bit more, I shouldn't say passive, but patient in their gameplay. They let Bound and Neptune really push into them and then they just try to use their team shot, their teamwork to, to find an unlikely right. train or to find their opportunities. Especially with the overshield, how they were managed to burn that just by being patient, like I said, and then just throwing really good grenades, shooting the OS player in the back. It's bound was, I think, rotating into the bottom, like the car tunnels. Love right. to see that play. And, and the OS, I think, is up right now. It's 737 yeah, right now. So it seems like some players are still fighting up, up top in car three. Scariotic is going to be able to grab that overshield. I think both teams just momentarily forgot it was up because that went all the way to the 25 second mark and i believe saiyan and scariotic definitely had the opportunity to get it but that's a heads up play from scariotic right he stood on the back half of that bottom midpoint just to make sure that they weren't going to spawn red so the blue spawn was more awaited and then he immediately pushed forward once those x's came off the screen into the bottom base and saiyan and scariotic have them on a cycle a five kill lead has opened up that overshield affording them just a little bit of extra time and you see it, it basically the flip just happened right there. Scariotic stays back and Saiyan stays up top in order to wait for those X's to come up. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for them that time. Yeah, it's actually seemed like Jason or Scariotic was actually blocking the opposite base in that situation. And so it kind of created like a timing loss and it didn't work out, like you said. So this is still a very close game. We're looking to see if blue team can get up top because it looks like both of them are down below and they're just patiently trying to sneak their way sneak their way back up top without making too much noise red team does have top mid control no this game is... also has oh no he just has a nothing has a bolt shot 
we'll see. <laughs> see if he uh, makes that easy. You know, the bolt shot can come in handy in certain situations because the pistol, three shots to the body before you can hit and get the kill. The bolt shot, only two shots to the body before you can get the, the beat down. So some players do like to use it for that situation. I think that, I mean, that's a that's a tough situation to find yourself in. But Scary Eye doing his best to stay alive. And, you know, uh, if I do have to say something, it's surprisingly uh, patient in this game. You know, both these teams, they really Very haven't patient. uh played as fast as i expected them to play yeah i, I predicted they were going to be very vicious and, and really they're just they're kind of very respectful of each other and, and they're they are flying when they see the opportunity so they're not you know they're not definitely there's no no one's scared of each other they are ready to, to take each other on a challenge but they're challenging intelligently and that's what you want to see intelligent intelligent challenges overshields up we're going to see if bound can grab it now and Looks like Saiyan just got out of there really quick and just went up top mid and didn't even want to bother with fighting that really intelligent play by him. We're seeing if they're able to survive here, maybe trade with the overshield, but they go two down. No, it's critical. So I red team is clawing back. Right, I don't think anyone got any damage on Bound either. So he still has about half his overshield to work with and he can just get himself back into this blue base and use that overshield to find himself a kill on Scariotic on the Peace Street. And now he's even able to go back out and just re-challenge Saiyan right away because he's only a shot down in that fight. And now Saiyan's in trouble. And all of a sudden this five kill lead has dissipated. Bound and Neptune have brought this back and it's 18 all. That overshield playing such a critical part. And I think the blue team just set up just a tad bit too early on that original overshield it was up at 25 seconds and we saw the 35 second mark we saw scariotic sitting in that bottom mid section of the map where he's so vulnerable and it costed them the overshield and now bound in neptune you like i said you give them an inch they're gonna take it a mile they do just that but this game immediately sees immediately slows back down i think we might see just a slow paced game until this next overshield comes up to where they were to where these teams feel comfortable to play that aggressive style that we saw bound in neptune just do Right, and then it's, it's, you know, Bound traded his battle rifle, now he's got that combo, so it looks like they're just trying to get any little advantage that they can, and they're trying to offer this top middle control, both teams are just playing it slow. Looks like Bound might be dropping down bottom mid, he's, and he's just, you know, what is that, like, slow walking across, I'm not sure yeah. what the term is, but, you know, barely pegging his stick so he Sutter makes no step. noise to... Sutter stepping, right, getting across so they don't see him, they don't hear him, and they can kind of get more of an expanded position on the map for this overshield dropping here pretty soon in about 10-15 seconds. Right. Like 25 I think it was mark at the, or so. I think it was at like the 20 mark now because it's 20 bounce. mark and late. Mm. Right, and we see we see Neptune just waiting on the point, and that might be dangerous because Scaryotic is already in position. He's trying to find the shots, but he manages to stay alive, and the overshield will go in favor of Bound. You see him jump up and get his head in the wall because you know if his head was vulnerable right there, I think Saiyan absolutely fives him, and they don't get away with that overshield. But just like a time man, this was all Scaryotic and Saiyan in the start. They had the lead. They were maintaining it and all of a sudden two overshields later and it's looking all neptune and bound killing spree for bound as he is just soaring across the map he has no fear saiyan is gonna get taken down the last pistol bullet in the chamber gonna do it only two kills necessary for bound and neptune to take your game one and i say that that's all the momentum you can ask for right when you're down five kills i'm pretty sure they just rallied 10 kills off without really i don't think they had one death in that 10 kill rally right there Les. And it goes to show, uh, you said, like, you know, give them one inch and they take it a mile. Bound's movement when he survived with that overshield, nearly surviving that death. He's just spring jumping everywhere, getting as quickly as he can. We saw, like, him screen jump, like, two or three times just to get, you know, to buy himself more timing. And that's how you get more slays as long as, you're, you know, you're in the right place at the right time and you're landing your shots, which he's been doing. And so that's how we see those those swings just go. They were down by five, then they tied it up, and now they're up by four. Every time they got the overshield, it was like about a four or five kill swing. I'm <laughs> saying is trying to do his best to stay alive. That is gonna fall, man. That was bound staying alive. Wow, man, right there. <laughs> jumps up and then he you know and the the greatest part is he knows when to stay alive and he knows when to re-challenge right so he stays alive he buys that three or four seconds of time he's like this teammate gives him the information that he needs to say oh i can drop down find the one shot player that's directly across from me try my best to stay alive for as long as possible and use that momentum to to get that 25 kill mark and i think that was just absolutely insane right. from bound and neptune that was a beautiful halo towards the end of that game yeah, it was neck and neck, it was down by two, you know, and even though, you know, I, I think uh, Bound and Neptune, were they the ones that, that were in the beginning, they were securing the overshields, but it, they were still barely only up by two or three, uh, and then 
Or was that? It was. I'm sure I think, it was I think Scary Sane 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 and got the first couple. The and first then, few, right? They were ahead by two or three, and then. Yeah, I think. Know? I think. Uh, you know, we saw them because Bound and Neptune did get that. Remember that over show that they got, and then it was basically burned off because Scary Otic and Saiyan just stood on top of right. each other in blue base. And, and they love that play. Ace. And that was such a smart play, right? But it's like it shows you how important that over shield is because they had to change their entire pace of game to just account for that over shield, and that they were perfectly content with doing that, staying around in a base for 45 seconds. But when you have to change your pace of game, you can't do that for three, four, five lives in a row, right? You have to be on top of that over shield and unfortunately they lost the power-up fight and now when we're talking about a power-up fight we have empire coming up next there's an overshield right. and a camouflage to worry about now what are scary Otic and saiyan going to do in order to counteract the overshield control that we saw from down in neptune right are they going to opt to go for both off the beginning are they going to be just focusing on one which one is it going to be there's a lot of different philosophies you know uh, overshield is very powerful you can suck attention and just tank people and camo you can make a play but you, you know you can get easily killed the same way. Five shots will take you down. So I'm ready to get it started. It looks yeah. like they're on the right teams and we're good to go. I think everyone's getting ready to start, man. I think the chat's probably going to start a riot. If Let's go. Because <laughs> I think uh, they're as excited for this game, too, as we are. Uh, I wouldn't want to wait any, any longer. But I mean, that incredible game. Uh, in that game one, Bound and Neptune just bring it right on back, get control of those power ups, and put them to work. And uh, I, what do you think? If you if you are saying and scary out of here, are you doing a one one split? You have that much confidence in your individual skill that you're gonna go and send one to camo, send one to overshield. Are you gonna make sure you get that overshield? You're gonna make I sure. You judging off of how they've been playing at this tournament, they're probably they might go together. But I know that they have the confidence, definitely have the confidence to do a one one split. So who knows? But they've been judging off of regret. They were very you know together and they kind of respected the opposition. They didn't fly at things. They made sure they had the you know, opening kill first before going for anything. Hey, absolutely uh, we're on board of bound as he makes his way towards the camel he's gonna burn that off and i guess the the victor is gonna be going to neptune because two players were sent from saiyan and scariotic to go and secure that camouflage and they got a burn off on the player and now all of a sudden neptune has the overshield they have no power up control they did get the kills but uh it could be dangerous right. as neptune still has that overshield but they work off each other so well that they're able to get two kills they nullify the overshield so we're basically looking at about a zero zero start with how that started out but that being said bound and neptune they do find the kills they have the map control now they have the player spawning on the opposite side of the map question is can they take advantage how do saiyan and scariotic respond on these next couple of spawns yeah it seems like neptune and, and bound are just kind of waiting side by side here making sure they don't go down they can do a good bait and switch they're susceptible that was a good nade thrown by saiyan he's able to get out if you can live here they can start oh. Pulling away, huge live by saying, "Oh my goodness!" Right, take them both down like that. Wow, you know, and that I was think really good, good nade. Right, and I think if that's uh, any other player, right, if it's not saying, if it's not scary, they might have gotten caught because Neptune the trade. Yeah. Well, Neptune used his movement to get. Uh, he like jumped up on top of the little platform thing over at that blue bend to just propel himself forward. And I think Saiyan and Scary Otic expected that. They knew that movement was coming, and they were able to find that kill without getting the trade out. I think Neptune did whatever he needed to do to try to put himself at an advantage for that fight to get the trade out. Just didn't end up going that way. And but this is the story that we saw at the beginning. Of game one where saiyan and scariotic play so well together that they play they dictate the pace they play it at a slower pace and they find each other's kills they find each other's trades and they maintain that three to four kill lead what has me concerned is that the overshield and camouflage is going to be coming up in another 20 seconds and they just can't afford to let neptune and bound get control of them and start doing what they did in game one so we'll see what happens they're both playing the outside at the moment i think saiyan has that camouflage in his eyes he's going to rotate himself over to this tower and i believe he's going to be there by himself so the camouflage is going to go into the favor of saiyan and scariotic wins his one-on-one -on -one fight while they're at it but neptune going to be able to get that overshield and he immediately spotted saiyan out of the sky and that's something that uh can be a little nerve-wracking when the overshield players just beaming you from across the map uh, instantly but uh, saying he still has yeah, the camera. Dude, I, Neptune has something else, man. Oh. He's just seeing him. He pushes him off the map, bro. Oh, Saiyan. my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. That's why you guys, you guys, Microsoft.com slash Xbox One X. Go buy yours right now. You can be like Neptune and spot the camouflages from across the map and become that better player. Make sure you invest that money in your setup <laughs> and become the better player like Neptune. 
Seriously, because I can't see that. So it's just, it's so infuriating when I get spotted. So that, that's got to be part of the reason why, besides them just yeah, being, you know, very, very talented players. <laughs> very With different. all that being said, everything we've seen, we still have a three kill game. And both teams are just kind of opting to just stay very close to each other. I'm not really sure if, uh, uh, you know, maybe Bound is going to opt to kind of expand out here and, and get more of a, you know, kind of a bigger map presence. But they, ca oh, they catch Neptune on his rotation, unfortunately. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Down goes for the stick for the trade. That would have been great, but it doesn't connect, unfortunately. So they are just... Looks like blue team is pulling away now. This is the first time we've seen that they've actually pulled away for more than just, a, you know, two or three kills. Now they have doubled red team's score. Right, and they, it doesn't seem as if they're showing any signs of slowing down. As we saw Saiyan land those cross map shots with the DMR, and he's still pushing into this uh, into this player. He just needs to win this one on one. He's re challenging, unfortunately for him. Bound's gonna win that fight. And we see Scaryotic trying to land the shots from across the map. Unfortunately, he can't do that. And now Neptune, he sees the opportunity. He's flying. Bound is just behind him, as they're gonna be having a dog fight over here towards the camo. Camo is up first. So we see both these teams prioritizing the camo spawn. Saiyan dies. And I love this play. So Ooh. see them fight. And the, the trust. Oh yeah, the tr absolute oh, trust. I, didn't go. I, I think that's wow. the perfect way it to pay off. That. Yep. Did you saw bound, bound 180 and both. went away from the tower while that fight in the cam for a camel was happening, and now they have that situation that we were talking about. You cannot let them have both because they we saw what they did in game one, and they're gonna do it again in game two as they find two kills immediately as Neptune stays alive with that camel. The overshield is eventually burned. You see both of them stand still for just a second, waiting for the spawner to come up. They have them spawned in the back's half of red, and then they immediately push forward to split the other spawner in blue. <laughs> with the huge stick here for the trade and then we're neck and neck again tied up we just saw them down by a double deficit right six to twelve now it's 13 13. yeah i mean it's they effectively use these power-ups so well man it's you, you don't like you see players and teams usually they get the camouflage they get the overshield and they don't really get the useful kills they are in the greatest positions that's just not the case when it comes to neptune and and bound they immediately put those overshields and camos to use they they claw their way back into this game and then once they get that momentum they use it to propel them forward to finish out these games and so far with how this is going i don't see bound and neptune stopping anytime soon as bound finds a stick on scaryotic in the bottom red base and then his teammate finds the kill from across the map they are heating on up it's it's as if we're re-watching game one right exactly blue team just getting for the early lead on dominance of the control and then on those on those power ups those customs but you know red team just like you said take give them one inch and they go a mile every single time you got to give it to red team i think they have been very very efficient with their overshield control and camo control basically just all of their custom controls so far in this series they have been on point Right, I think, I think now, you know, we saw the camo was so much earlier than the overshield before. Now they're just about at the same time, so we'll see how these teams decide to play it. Scaryotic just chilling on the outside part of the map. I think the blue team's just going to opt for that overshield control. Scaryotic's just going to stay on the outside, but I think... Let's see, is there a red player? Oh my, that's just such a critical mistake. They're opting yeah, to go for both that. again? Oh, yeah, that's uh, he can't let Neptune get away. So Saiyan does have the camouflage, so we'll see if he gets spotted by Neptune again. I think I think he is seeing flashbacks, man. He does not want to get yeah, Neptune. Just he has an eye, man. <laughs> he knows where these camouflage players are, and uh, he's eventually cool. gonna find the shots and say necessary to find those trades. And uh, we're coming that's down a big to trade right there. Yeah, I mean, if Saiyan stays alive, you know, gets away with that camouflage, uses it for the full amount of time, I think they run away with this game. They've done a great job at making sure they take down those Remain. camouflage players and largely i think they, they probably have 20 20 vision or something man because they just spot him it's not even the camo does anything wrong he's doing his best to stay alive and then be in a good position to try to make a play on the overshield it's just the overshield player just constantly spotting them out I'm loving this spacing though we've seen from both teams right now it seems like they're always ready to to either like jump in bait and switch from across the map or very you know they can like get the trade from another angle and they have neck and neck right here it's they have some time too right i think everything's a little bit delayed mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, this is like we have probably another minute until the overshow and camouflage come up. So this game could potentially be over if these teams play fast enough. But and uh, Bound and Neptune, they might be making that happen. They find two kills right away. They immediately move out towards the red to block out those spawns to force some blue. And you see them, they wait for that X to disappear and they immediately push forward and they constantly force the split spawn. They're doing it so effectively. The map presence that Bound and Neptune have right now to constantly force out split spawns to keep them in this lead has just been absolutely marvelous i you guys this is a, this is a master class on how to play twos right here between these two teams they do an absolutely wonderful job at it they both have their they both have the, what they're good at and what they could improve on but they do what they're good at so well and bound, oh my god <laughs> oh man he tried to make something work bound just there. monkeying around delaying it i thought he was probably done with a few seconds earlier but this overshield is up and this is going to be oh, a big grab no. for both teams have to make out with it this is huge i'm wondering where the camo went saiyan has this is like saiyan has the camo oh my saiyan has to stay alive right here this player is hunting him down he's just listening for any kind of sound q saiyan does get away they can win it on this set of lives they just cannot afford to trade saiyan has a camouflage plenty of time to work with stutter steps are coming in they want to make sure they can't hear them across the map he spots neptune in the window that's going to give away their position they immediately reposition themselves into the turbine saiyan looking for his opportunity is going to move and press his position he has to play fast you see neptune and bound immediately just moving across the map they're just trying to run out the clock they want this camouflage to disappear so saiyan cannot use it to his advantage they do just that and now they neptune managed. knows that saiyan has no more camo to work with they are gonna play this red base and now it's up to saiyan and scariotic they're gonna try to isolate out one player saiyan come from the top but the sticky day comes from the base he is staying alive he's trying to do his best but neptune eventually works with bound and find scariotic over in that closet beautiful job by bound and neptune just to bait each other so well and to be watching each other's backs they did not afford any opportunity for saiyan to find a better position and to come in and find that kill before scariotic could die beautiful job by neptune and bound to take down that game too yeah that was perfectly played right textbook halo just run out the camo just like we saw on the flip side the previous game where they tried to run out bounds os bound just tried to run out Saiyan's camo right there at the end just start rotating as a team and it worked out. It was super well played, well played. So we're ready to go on to Plaza now. My favorite, the one I've been yeah. waiting for. Yeah. I am excited. <laughs> Woo, man. <laughs> yeah, both teams just play this really well and they were able to dominate their, their last match and get a 10-0 lead. So I want to see how they're going to collide here on Plaza. Right, and um, I think it's worth noting, you know, Plaza and Rig play extremely similar. If Scariotic and Saiyan can come out and play these maps really well, they they put themselves right back into a game five. And uh, it's definitely the roadmap's possible, right? They're down 2-0, but both the games have been extremely close. It's just little inopportunity, inopportune things that are holding them back. And it's namely power-up control. But, you know, there's a sniper rifle on this map. We haven't seen a sniper play uh, play uh, interest in these maps yet. So we'll see how that changes up the, dyna the dynamic between these two teams and how much of an impact that will play. But, man, I am, I'm ready to start it, man. I think everyone in this stream just wants us to get on to game three and see some more action between these two teams. Say no more. I just already hit start as soon as you said that. Yeah, I mean... I <laughs> You know, if if, uh, if Louis is in the chat, man, I think these two teams, they, this is your this is your Money Tuesday right here. You know, get, get these guys playing Money Tuesdays with each other. This is a master class, guys. If you want to see just incredible Halo action, especially on a twos level, these guys are doing it uh, as about as well as you can. Uh, this is just, it, it's a pleasure to watch, man. And I'm glad I'm here with you, Laz, to watch it as we're moving on to our game three. Damn, man, I'm so happy to be casting this with you. You're so good at what you do. I'm learning so much. This is exciting. And we get to cast these great players right here. Hopefully this keeps going though. I want to see blue team get, get this win here so it continues. Right, so we're going to have Bound playing for this overshield. Scariotic is able to grab that and get away with it. I want to hop on with him, see what kind of aggressive Huge. push he makes because he immediately pushes forward. But Neptune was able to go grab that noob combo from the base. He's going to be able to burn off all of that overshield, but not before it costs him his life. Bound finds the trade out on Saiyan in the driveway. Scariotic's immediately pushing back. They find the two kills, but that snipe spawn is open. The red team is going to probably spawn in a position to grab that snipe 
sniper rifle before Scariotic could even get a damage on him. And now Scariotic just has to push right on through. Saiyan tries his best. He does find the trade over at the snipe spawn, but Scariotic doing his best to find a trade. This is blow for blow so far. We saw a slower paced game in game one and game two off the start. We're not seeing any slow paced gameplay in the beginning of this game three, lads. Yeah, they are flying, and interestingly enough, Scariotic did not grab the combo. I think it's still down on Luke after he took down, right? It was it was taken out, you know, from the OS player, and so I'm wondering if who's going to be able to grab that, if it's going to reset. Both teams are just opting to fight for control, and they're just, they're still trading right now, so it's neck and neck. Right, I think they were, I think they were just concerned about the timing. Prioritizing that sniper, right, on the, yeah an interesting play and now you know that with how these players are positioned i just don't see anyone getting their way back in that back loop or into that backyard for a little while unless the spawn is forced there so we'll see uh we'll see how long it takes around new combo to play an impact into this game again so far it's just gonna be pistol on pistol action for the next little bit scariotic finds a player over in that loop Bound trying to do his best to find Scariotic, but he is one shot and trying his best to stay alive. And he does an ambitious re-challenge and he doesn't see Scariotic. He went and looked over that loop, but Scariotic was just hiding underneath the lip. We could see it with the outlines. Bound could not. And now this player, Scariotic, has just been making work of this S4 area, staying alive. And he eventually finds Bound's partner over at the loop area. And Bound has to be kicking himself. He's he's like, what else can I do to find this player? And now all of a sudden, now Overshield has gone to the favor of Sam, this map, it's almost as if we're seeing an inverse of the team roles that we saw from before. Overshield control going firmly into the favor of Saiyan and Scariotic. Neptune and Bound having to play on their back foot at the moment. Seven to four lead opened on up for, uh, for Scariotic and Saiyan. Right, so, oh, we're not checking the, he's not checking his corners here and Red Team is doing a really good job just kind of hiding and, and being, just predicting that the flank, they're able to kind of trade here. So yeah, we, we have seen blue team, you know, secure some of these overshields in the past and the question is are they able to do a lot with them and it seems like so far it's 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 very similar though. It's a two kill lead. I'm wondering, you know, when red team if they start getting control, are they going to be able to do more than just get a couple of slaves with the overshield? Um, this is a much bigger map though than we seen we saw earlier with regret being much smaller and empire also being a smaller map. Saying just landing fives on loot, but we do have a sniper. Yeah, that sniper what Neptune can do. Oh that player just flew out of that <laughs> position, man. He did not want anything to do with that challenge. And that's for good reason. We saw Neptune hit the shot on the player that ran away. And now Neptune doing his best to stay away, but just saying, just gonna be able to land that last shot before he gets up that lift and earn himself a sniper rifle. He's looking for any player. He's gonna just gonna lock down a lane and let his teammate work around him. Now, that one thing being said, usually you don't want that sniper rifle in nest, and now saying he immediately rotates it out guys if you're a player that grabs that sniper rifle and you play it in s i strongly suggest you watch what saiyan does right here because he knows how vulnerable that spot is he wants to constantly play the sniper rifle in a fluid position so he can find players uh with with their pants down and as he finds oh, one looking for the second unfortunately it's gonna cost Gariotic's life Gariotic just getting behind that player and getting the back smack before getting <laughs> taken out Whew. So yeah, we're gonna see, you know, Ness, you know, having sniper on Ness could be good. It just depends on the timing, but definitely setting it up so that you can just spawn trap someone down there, a team down there and have the control of blue and, and Ness, or blue and loot is very dominant control. We're gonna see if blue team can take this numbers advantage and get the overshield. Down's trying to play for it. Did he did he grab it? No, still up, still up. Still up. Saiyan has that lane completely locked down. These players know better than to challenge the sniper rifle that's just looking straight at the overshield. Interesting by saying he expected a player to push through his door. But I mean, look at the patience from Neptune and Bound right here. They want to try to eventually push this player out of position. You see that? Neptune came in through the door and distracted long enough and Bound immediately grabbed that overshield, got control of it. Now Saiyan has to work his hardest to nullify that overshield control. He he does hit the snipe shot that's going to take away most of that overshield but that's a beautiful job by neptune to get in position and the patience of bound not to get overzealous on that overshield let that player draw the sniper out of position and then grab that overshield and get control of this map we are a one kill game 12 to 13 on this plaza game three everything on the line for Saiyan and scariotic they cannot afford to drop another map it has to be a reverse sweep if they're going to come away with this first place prize yeah, definitely could not have asked for a better championships series right now. 
I'm waiting to see now. Bound is just definitely playing it slow. He's got the combo. It looks like he's heard that they got some shots in. Both players on blue team just kind of playing slow here on the loop. Everyone's just trying to bait each other, get the first pick. But that sniper's gonna drop soon, so that's gonna be that's gonna definitely change the, the way that the game is gonna swing here. But the OS is gonna drop as well. And that was one of the a little later though. That was one of the fastest repositions I've seen from Bound. He Bad immediately took that ready. damage. He flew back into the yard and immediately went back to bottom mid. It was, it was an interesting He's play. just trying to live. Yeah, yeah just, just wants to live. He's, he's so important right now with this combo with the OS coming up. He needs to survive. And unfortunately, they're going to hunt him on down, but not before he takes down Scaryotic. But Saiyan's going to get rewarded with a 17% charged up plasma uh, plasma pistol. That's going to be enough to nullify this overshield if someone puts get it. But remember how patient Bound played on that overshield before. This overshield still, yes. I think, has about another 10 seconds to come up. And these, team, these teams need to be aware that it's going to be a little bit of a time crunch before that overshield does come up. And now Saiyan has a player in front of him. Two players are going to be challenging. I think it's Neptune that... Oh, actually, yeah, Neptune has a sniper rifle. He's trying to find that player that does have it. Oh, and they both go two down. This is perfect timing for a red team to just grab control of the map. And they're ready for the possible bottom nest spawn trap. They didn't grab the overshield. No. Bound is just one step ahead. They are delaying it every single time that they can. Right, I mean, that's so critical. Oh my. Heads up, plays. Great job by Scaryotic to get the uh, stick on Bound when that Bound did push that. But these play these teams are so heads up, man. I love that. If they get two players down and the overshield's coming up, they're going to wait as long as possible to grab that overshield just to make sure they have as much overshield charge as possible and to have the time dictated towards their, uh, in their, for their team. But so far, man, uh, we were, you were talking about it earlier, Laz, and it's happening. You know, we saw the overshield go into the favor of Scaryotic. And saying, one time that's it. all it takes yeah and they run with it they run I mean, they've gotten a few more than just a few kills we'll see if they can keep it going it's only a two kill lead though but that is what we've been seeing right we've seen blue team kind of secure these off off the rip they secure the control of the of the custom the power-ups get a few kills but red team gets control of it and then just run away with the game and they have control but they didn't do it it's only up, up by one right now we'll see what happens Right, and I think I think it largely has to do the last two maps we've seen have large open spaces on um, Plaza. You know, there's that big open in the middle, but you can really isolate out fights. And I think Saiyan and Scaryotic have done a great job to make sure that they can limit the movement of Bound and Neptune to push out their fights. You know, when they're fighting in loop, it's in that loop centralized area. They keep their backs in a position to where they can't get shot from players cross map. I think that's why we haven't seen Neptune and Bound really take advantage of the overshield that we saw. But that being said, uh, they have full control the next overshield is going to be coming up relatively soon as we're on with neptune he needs to find this kill over at the lr or at least stay alive because this next overshield that inside jockeying position for lr is so important because you have just free reign to check that overshield land down some massive shots if needed and neptune is hunting down for the players i want to see so scary just seconds. won that fight is that going to earn him his overshield up no so overshield's not oh neptune says no but Saiyan is ready for it, so it's gonna get ultimately go on blue team's hand. Let's see what blue team can do here, and let's see if they can make a big swing here and come back and, and get this win so we can continue the series. I wanna see this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's what we wanna see. Let's go. Yeah, I know. You see, uh, if there's a player in this game, it's probably uh, Saiyan that you do not want to let him have the overshield and sniper rifle. And sniper. But uh, oh, unless you have a combo. I mean, the combo nullifies everything, right? It's, it's... That's the one thing. <laughs> And now only two kills necessary for Neptune and Bound to take this game. Bound makes it one kill. He has a snipe rifle. Neptune immediately moved his way to loop. They have the spawn trap at bottom. Neskariotix is in the worst position of the game. Bound has a snipe rifle looking at bottom with Neptune with the LR looking at top with Scariotic has to push forward. And the kill goes in favor of Neptune. The recognition from these two players, the force to split spawn trap at bottom nest to give them prime position to take the game and the $300 price purse is like no other great job by bound and neptune it was looking shaky when saiyan got that overshield neptune grabs the noob combo says do not worry about it i have this game in the bag forces out the spawn let's bound go crazy with that sniper rifle absolutely amazing game three from bound and neptune that was that was something else last wow all i have to say yeah i mean that was, that was crazy congratulations they turned it on a dime man it, it, you know bound and neptune 
Yeah. I think Saiyan is Scary Otak control. Revenge, man. It's like, I think in next two's tournament, I think Sa Sa Saiyan and Scary Otak are going back at it. And they have Bound and Neptune in the sights because they had those games. It was so close, but it was just a couple critical errors that went into the favor of Bound and Neptune. And they just took such advantage of the opportunities given to them. And big shout out to Bound in that last game. He needed to turn on up and he did just that. 17 and nine and uh, doing everything he could to win that game for his team. 25 to 21 man it, it, it's like a storyline each game and it seemed as if it repeated itself saying scary very consistent yeah, they, they come out mm -hmm. they come out strong and then bound in neptune they look for the, they look for that little weakness they find that weakness and they take full advantage absolutely beautiful job guys I, like i said this is a master class in how to play twos and uh, you should be watching bound in neptune any chance you get when it comes to twos because they they do it better than anybody else in the game it's great to see. It's a pleasure to watch and cast this, and and just great high level Halo right here. Mm -hmm. Even it was the best of three hours. I know we we're both hoping all the way to go through to you know. I think Truth was game five. We wanted to see a Truth matchup go to game five, but every game was neck and neck. Super exciting. All four players just really giving it all. Right, and it's a great tournament. And we saw impressive plays from both these players, right? We saw Scary out of clutch up in moments, yeah. and we saw Saiyan do, do exactly the same. I think Saiyan was just such an impactful player throughout that entire series. He went 15 and 10 in that last game. He got that sniper rifle that, uh, and the overshield towards the end. He had it in his hands. Unfortunately for him, it's just they were in the Ran into a combo. And the combo just nullified <laughs> that overshield. And, you know, honestly, you can't criticize what Saiyan did in that position. He had to do what he had to do, right? They're trying to get control of the game. You have to take down those players. But just great recognition right. from Bound and Neptune. Hey, overshield's coming up. They got the sniper rifle overshield. We have to prioritize the new combo. They did that. And then they did a wonderful job at baiting themselves into that flower door to make sure that Saiyan had to come through that small, confined space in order to challenge out that overshield. And they absolutely ripped them away it beautiful job by bound and neptune to secure that game three exciting matches to watch absolutely man i just that that was that was great oh man guys i i know that we wanted that to go to the game five but uh three games the how action-packed they were so they, i think i think that's satisfying enough yeah so so they're the champions and they have secured the the 300 dollars cash prize and also those limited edition mcc oh, posters yeah, right that, that, man. That's, that were donated those are those are sick yeah shout out to so i think it send was, those out too i think it was xbox one insider that would uh that yeah. brought that uh that prize pool in you know and that's it's, just, it's always cool to have something physical that you get from these tournaments something that no one else has right limited edition halo posters from xbox one insider to bound in neptune congratulations to them and along with that 300 hundred dollar prize pool I, I think that's something that you can really really be proud of right you go to get that poster i think that was a map i think that match was absolutely incredible but guys uh we we can't thank console gaming league enough go follow them on twitter exclamation mark discord in the chat to get involved with the discord they're gonna have another tournament on june 6th be aware you know push that notification uh whatever thing you need to do on twitter just to be uh able to see when they're going to announce what kind of format it's going to be get your teams ready start practicing now so you can take on players like bound neptune uh saiyan and scary Otic, right it's not every day that you get the opportunity to play such top tier players like saiyan and bound and neptune and scary Otic, right this is a this is a great opportunity for you guys to get involved and once again shout out to paradise halo they came in they increased our prize pool they gave us some awesome video content to play in between the scenes and, and shout out to to sean man he he's just such an incredible talent in the esports scene in general and the fact that he blesses that talent in the halo scene is, is something that we should all be proud of and guys go subscribe to their youtube it's, it's absolutely incredible um man laz yeah. any any last hopefully words? there'll be some i mean and just to, to tail off on that for paradise halo we're looking at doing some content off of this tournament and just seeing off of just how this series right here ended the storylines were incredible so i mean it was exciting to watch it once and i you know i'm excited to go back and watch it again and, and hopefully we'll be able to put out some some more content for the community right I know. but yeah thank you guys so much and console gaming league you guys have been awesome sultan in the back right here just chilling with us and you guys were going off and going hype whenever we see the blades going off and the headshots and he's just in the background you know it, it's all it's been a good time on our nothing but laughs and we, we hope you guys had a really good time as well Right. I mean, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Yeah, Laz, I think I think you have to make a couple videos, man. We had so many great series, right? That grand finals was something else. The 
the uh, round two and round three that we saw with Proximity and crew and what they were able to do in those rounds, those were incredible guys. This entire tournament has just been a, an absolute blast. And um, we really, really Absolutely. appreciate you guys all coming out. Absolutely. But um, whew, man, uh, you know, I might need to get a little water. I might need to go, uh, go, go find something. Go sit. Go, go find somewhere to sit down and relax. Let my heart rate come down a little bit. But congratulations, Bound and Neptune are your victors in the console gaming league two v two. Stay with us for, uh, you know, for more Halo action. Hit that follow button. Get involved with the Discord. June six is our next Halo League. And guys, if you play Overwatch on console, if you if you go and you play the fighting games like Mortal Kombat, go get involved with the Discord. There's so much more uh, that uh, that console gaming league has to offer, and we really appreciate them coming down to Halo Five and, and blessing us with their incredible talent and uh, and their incredible organization. We really just can't say enough about them. That being said, uh, that's really going to do it for us at the end, guys. Uh, once again, just appreciate every single one of you coming out i think you guys you guys can see it on screen go follow callus on twitter you guys can follow me as well uh, at callus with four s's i believe and then at garrett the tool for my twitter we appreciate you guys and, and obviously big shout out yeah i know you said it already Laz, but salt and pepper is one of the the greatest esports producers in the scene if you guys can go give him a follow on twitter as well the exclamation mark casters in the uh in the chat will pop up his twitter and go give him a follow i mean he's going to be doing great things in the scene to come that's going to do it for us congratulations once again to bound and neptune taking their lion's share of the 500 hundred dollar prize pool we had today absolutely congrats it's been a pleasure guys Two players are going to be challenging. 